This week on the Flat Chat Podcast, V8 Scops Edition. Jay Kennedy joins the boys to share his plans for world domination via the iRacing Esports Network. Ross Rizzo talks about magical skateboard racing rigs. And the Gene Genie rubs his lantern as we put together the last few rounds of Scops. The Flat Chat Podcast is sponsored by Trojan. Let's get the season underway. VRS, V8 Scots. There's more more for your contact. Wow, that was the fire. Down the inside, tries got 10. No, they touch. They're holding together, though. Everybody goes. Dilso gets a storming start from the front row. Oh, hang on a minute. Who is that? Around the outside, around the outside, get the inside, hold it down to the inside, you send it. Time to make your name, son! Rewind on the edge for the hairpin, okay, dog off to the in the room and gets the position. Hello and welcome to the Flat Chat Podcast, the V8 Scops Edition. After a month and a half of holidays and uh, injuries, we are very happy to be back in the studio to bring you all the latest in V8 Scops. We've had three great events since the last podcast, and we're going to do our best to bring you up to speed with the latest happenings in the series, and of course, a couple of special guests to top things off. This is The Eight Scops. The Flat Chat Podcast, The Eight Scops Edition. Well, I need to bring in some co-hosts as well. So joining us as usual, JC Richards and Matthew Norris. Well, boys, it's uh, great to be back. Evening, Kessie. Evening, Nori. Really good to be back from the break. It was, yeah, far too long. We've all had our rounds of being sick and this and that, but uh, we're here, we're back, and uh, back with a vengeance. And, uh, yeah, yeah, mate, excited to, to be doing it again. Yeah, g'day, Kessie. G'day, JC. It's excellent to be back behind the mic doing what we do best, and that's podcasting all things V8 Scott. So let's get right on into it. And also joining us tonight to help co-host the show is Progression Racing Australia's very own Gene Genie, Gene Fitties. Welcome to the show, mate. Woo. Uh, cheers, Chris. Thanks very much. Hey, guys. Thanks for really, uh, inviting me into the studio for this um, edition. Done anything like this before, mate? No, no, nothing like this before. But uh, I'm sure I'm a natural, so let's just crack on. <laughs> Did you bring your uh, lamp, Gene Genie? Yeah, mate. Yeah. There's some seriously shiny uh, areas on that lamp. I've been rubbing it for a few people wanting some wishes out there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, brilliant. Well, moving on, let's, let's get stuck right into it. The first round we missed, uh, Mossport, the 10th of June. Yes, that does seem like a very long time ago. The talking points of that one, Jared Philsell threw the pack once again. Did you guys think that he could win that race? I mean, the safety car came out. Lap, it was about 20 laps to go. Safety car, due to an eye racing glitch, ran for about six laps, and that may have hurt Jared a little bit, but he went from 10th to 5th. Uh, sorry, 15th to 5th place. Um, just another run from Jared Philsell. It almost feels like you, when you hear the commentary team and when you watch the race uh, nowadays with Philsell's just, just extreme pace you know it's just it's just amazing that you watch him and you just think to yourself how far down the field can he go until he can get back up the top again it's almost like you don't really question that he, he would be able to get back up and yeah he did an extremely good job on on corners like other cars were trying to pass in places that he was trying to he, he was making passes and he does make it look very easy yeah and that safety car was a bit funny because you got like formula one runs buddy 20 laps with a safety car, so yeah, it wasn't nothing, nothing new that to me. <laughs> but yeah, a bit of a glitch, glitch here and there. But yeah, Phil Cell was yeah on a charge, mate. He did very, very well. Yeah, it was quite obvious that it was, it was definitely a glitch because even even the um, commentary team didn't even know what was going on with that one. So everyone so was mo- confused. most confused I've ever heard. Sperry. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of uh, pretty amazing to watch. Like, I mean, he got boned by the timing of the safety car, obviously. Um, Nothing to do with the glitch, but um, just the way he can um, can get it in on the brakes and just place the car in, in spots where you know doesn't seem possible to us mere mortals. I have first-hand experience with uh, him and Rogers at Sonoma last year for Gops. Um, <laughs> just at the incredible closing speed that they have under brakes compared to 
you know, the rest of us lower down the order kind of guys. So like, well, at least with Sonoma, it's a genuine passing spot. Where Jared was sending it at Moss. Yeah, I mean, he got a couple of gimmies from some teammates, but um, apart from that, you know, like there's some serious lobs that I guess guys saw it coming and just thought, "What can I do?" That's a really good good point, uh, Gene. Because I mean, I mean, uh, you talk about perception and you see certain drivers on track. If you see Phil Cell coming up, it's like I remember back at the race at um, yes, yeah, Son- Sonoma, where people were just saying like, you know, you just see him coming up behind you, like, damn, better get out of the way. And that's just an attitude that you don't want drivers to have, especially if you're in the top 10, top 20. Like, you need to have that, like, you know, solid belief in yourself. But sometimes, like, well, what are you going to do? He's going to pass me anyway. It's not yeah. a great attitude to want people to, to have, but I mean, sometimes it's just a bit In a race situation, I don't think anyone's, like, literally at the point of giving the spots away, depending on who it is that's uh, trying to get past them. But, um, you know, there's kind of a weird mentality you have when you see someone behind you and you see who it is and you you make a decision based on who that person is as to how hard you're going to fight them. Well, that's why this scop season is done. It's going so well because as we kind of have all seen as we go through the podcast and through the different races, maybe some of that um, veil is being uh, let down because we've got, you know, some new winners this season and a lot has changed in not just the results but the dynamics maybe. So, yeah, that's no, interesting stuff. And the last battle, the big battle that ended that race was between second and third at the time, Jake Burton, and uh, who's a friend of the podcast, and Ethan Grigg Galt, who, you know, is one of the really fast guys who's coming second in the championship at the moment. And they had a little bit of a tussle going into that last turn, giving um, another one of the up-and-coming drivers, well, I say up-and-coming, I think he's already there, but Sam Blackhawk, I believe it was his first podium. So um, strong effort from him. I, I'm not sure whether there was the need to send it on that last corner. Very hard corner to, to pass on through the last corner of my sport. Hunger, mate. The hunger. Yeah. It's the hunger game. The difference between the top echelon and... And uh, the next level down, or all the rest of the levels below that, is that that thing they'll just fight for every last scrap. Um, whether it ends up making them look a bit bad for, or, you know, questionable moves or whatever, is neither here nor there to them because they've just got that drive. To quote the late great Ayrton Ant- Senna, if you no longer go for a, an opening, you're no longer a racing car driver. And that still applies to uh, sim races if you don't go for that position. Are you no way, Nori. I've never heard that before. No really? Way. I've never heard. No, nah, really? never heard that quote before. That's Jeez. our Formula One expert. I've never heard that quote. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of those quotes that I don't know. Like that. That. I've got no, the no. Senna DVD. Would you like to lend? I can, I can lend you that. <laughs> no, actually, no, who's Aden Cena? Who's he? Is he a wrestler? <laughs> Is he one of those pro wrestlers, Aden Cena? Never heard of him, mate. And that quote. I swear I've never seen that on 50,000 billion. Uh, you know, the iRacing <laughs> tidbits YouTube. is quite good for that one. No, he's quite famous. Copped a suspension rod to the eye. Very bad ending. Oof, damn. The thing with these moves is it might look from the outside to be a bit low percentage, but it, it's definitely completely calculated decision by these drivers, you know? Like, Sometimes. It, yeah, no, that, that, top, <laughs> that top echelon of guys, uh, you know, they're making subconscious decisions at least, and and acting on them, it's not just like a close your eyes and hope thing so that I can get get the win or get the podium or whatever. It's, you know, I'm sure they're still seeing the big picture overall. And- so moving on to the race results, uh, one of my favourite tr- favorite tracks, it's a bit sad that we have to move on so quickly, but um, in uh, as is the normal format, they run split two first and then split one. Um, we're going to run through, so split two, uh, the first few drivers there, Matt Morris had a very good battle with Jamie McKnight, who unfortunately overshot his pits, um, and that cost his chance at a, at a win there. Uh, followed by Cameron Dance, who, uh, driving for TTL, he's definitely proving that he's not just a dirt driver. And uh, after that was uh, CMRs, Craig Jones and Steve Jansen in third and fourth. Uh, moving on to split one, the results. Now, Madison Down took a victory there. Um, is Madison moving up in the championship or what? Sure is. 
Is he? I'm not sure. Just honestly, <laughs> I just said that. I don't know. I should really look at the show notes, shouldn't I? I don't even even know the results of the championship. But he's he's third in the championship at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's third position. Um, that that win obviously brought him a little closer. Um, well, he's won at Phillip Island and here. Has he won anywhere else? Yes. No, he's just won those two races. Um, but, because but he been... has been competitive. Absolutely, he's always at the front. And, and when you're in that team competing at that level. And I think we've had someone on, I think it was Burton that we had on, that said that you need to be around guys who are pushing you. And and that sort of makes that sense that Madison is performing because his teammates are pushing him. Yeah, sure. And I don't know. To, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know that at the schedule or what um, any of the guys uh, at TTR are going through, although we've spoken to um, Jake. We know he's got a lot on his plate. Um but Madison's got a lot to do with running the team too. Uh, he's kind of got a bit of a cushy seat there as far as if he gets a couple of wins in a season, I mean, he, he's winning even whoever in his team wins. You know, if Phil Cell takes a championship out, he's a winner anyway for the team. But, um, yeah, good on him. It's, it's amazing to be able to run a team, uh, you know, mould everything that's going on over there and take some wins too. Yeah, legend. Yeah, and, and they find themselves in first position in the team's championship too, which is uh... – they're, they're quite quite away in front as well. So, yeah, good to see. Great result for Sam too, making the podium. And uh, I dare say, any round now there'll be, um, you know, not not to uh, to say that it wasn't a genuine podium, you know, but um, he got lucky with it a little. But um, I'd say we'll see well, him up there just on on true pace any day well, now as well. I suppose based on uh, based on if you keep putting yourself at the front like Sam has been doing of recent, uh, then something like that will happen. <laughs> um, he's not far off getting there without without any of that assistance. But um, I mean, you keep putting your car up in the top five, then you've got a really good shot at a podium. Yeah, definitely. I watch the space that one. I'd say. Um, I do want to mention as well through those Jared Fussell passes at Moss. Uh, if you don't know it, it's a it's a crazy double right-handed corner, um, and it is not a passing spot for most people. Uh, we have already covered that, but I do want to mention a comment by Ben Wilkinson. How does he sit down with balls that big? I'm so scared, and I'm not even racing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, nice. <laughs> I assume that one ended up on the V8 online quote wall, no doubt. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it, it was definitely. Uh, Probably the most reactive thing uh, on the YouTube broadcast as I was watching it. Definitely the one thing Kessie took home. What? Someone's uh, balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. We're moving it that way already. Uh, so the results there, Madison down in first position. Sam Blacklock, as we said, for second position with a great result. Jake Burton. So TTR had the lockout one, two, three. And Ethan Greek Gold in fourth position. Uh, just prior to the launch of iRacing Esports Network, Nori and I sat down with the founder and co-owner of v 8 Online to get some insights as to how the broadcast came to fruition and discuss the future of online broadcasting. Uh, this was, called, was recorded a couple of rounds ago, so it might sound a little out of sequence, but uh, nevertheless, here is our interview with Mr. v 8 Online himself, Jay Kennedy. 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 So some of the big news in iRacing uh, out there t- at the moment, you've got V8 Online joining with LSR TV and RaceSpot into a single platform YouTube channel called the iRacing Esports Network. Very exciting news. And off the back of that, we have we have the pleasure of having the co-owner of V8 Online in the studio with us, Jay Kennedy. Thanks for joining us, Jay. Hey guys. How are we? Very well, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, mate, absolutely awesome. I'm really excited to have you on uh, on the podcast today, mate. Um, look, this is really big news. Uh, this has been hap- this has been behind the scenes. It's been happening for a while. I hear. Um, how excited are you for this, Jay? Yeah, very, very excited. It's a, a new evolution for us here at Vats Online. Um, in regards to to our broadcast, we've always been trying to push the limit and try and 
uh, evolve things and, and move things along as much as we can and moving it to the next level, joining with uh, Race Spot and LSR TV to help with uh, the RSN Esports Networks for a few of our broadcasts a week. It's going to be absolutely fantastic and can't wait to uh, to get it live and to help grow um, the, the esports side of uh, the RSN business uh, throughout the world. It's massive and it's and it really does sort of move esports along just that little bit further. Uh, I want to know from you, Jay, like with the with the the rise of esports and how prominent V8 Online in particular is becoming, do you take great pride in the fact that you're really where some drivers launch themselves and their their racing platform? Oh, definitely. We've been really proud, like to see guys message us and, and, you know, say, like, after being members for two years, oh, hey, I joined after watching one of your broadcasts. That's a pretty, pretty humbling thing. And uh, to have a promo code and see how many people join from that is, is pretty big as well. And, um, yeah, for a starting point with the, the eSports channel, we're just going to have our V8 content on there, so Monday V8s and V8 scops. And uh, over time, as a series gain in prestige and, and things like that, they'll get evolved over onto the network. So all the World Series... Uh, all the World Championship Series on Race Spot will all be across on the eSports Network as well as the uh, the 2K Skippy League and, and a few other you know big marquee broadcasts all going to be on the network to start with and then over time we'll gradually evolve it and grow some more series into there. So um, I know we've been talking about what other series we broadcast actually have the prestige that, that, it, that is good enough to be there. And we've got a couple in mind that we'll, we'll hopefully get on there uh, before the end of the year as well. So it's it's really, really humbling to... To see how much we've grown and, you know, to think seven years ago I started uh, doing a, a broadcast on uh, live stream uh, with a, a single monitor, no idea what I was doing. I think I had eight viewers out of uh, my bedroom on a dodgy ADSL connection and to grow into what it's become now is pretty massive. Well, that sort of leads me on to where I was going to go with that is is how how you came to create VRTs Online and... And what made you get into the broadcasting game in, in the um, first place, Jay? Yeah, I pr- sort of got thrown under the bus, actually, by Mitch McLeod. So um, before V8s got started, we had the Monday Night V8, which it is now. But you had all the drivers that race V8 Scops now racing every single Monday night at that one time slot every single week. The highest strength of field out of any series in iRacing for three years in a row. The highest strength of field I think we got was 5,700 for a strength of field. So that's world championship level strength of field stuff. Wow. Um, and that, that's just on a standard Monday night um, featuring only Australians. We've had um, Madison Down, I think, won eight championships. Mitch McLeod won one. We had Richard Hampstead win two. Josh Muggleton won one. Uh, Justin Rougier missed out, I think, three times, got three runner-up uh, championships. It was it was incredible. The Monday night was the big event. Back then as well, we, we didn't have the four races a week that you had, you only had two chances. So the guys would race early race Monday night and the late race on, on Monday. And back then too, we didn't have dynamic weather. So you also, uh, a lot of guys who actually wouldn't practice in official sessions for the week. They'd practice in private sessions or testing sessions so that nobody knew their pace throughout the week. And without the, the qualifying in the session as well, uh, the guys would would wait until the last session on Monday to uh, to actually put in their hot lap and actually get that twenty minute session to put in that one lap for the week. And it was it was really really heated. It was really intense. It was literally V8 Scops level, but every single Monday night it was it was hectic. Uh, we used to broadcast for about three hours. We do the early race, the qualifying, and the late race, and uh, it it was huge. It it really was a massive thing. And uh, I think. One race, we had nearly 400 points for the race winner, which is almost unheard of. It, it was huge, the uh, the Monday night V8 race back in the day, 2012, 2013. The fields were so uh, so full on. Um, so, yeah, that's where I sort of started. There, were, there was a broadcast for it, but it was uh, done by a couple of guys. I don't really remember who it was. And, you know, it was on and off and couldn't really be bothered with it. And then Daniel Bryant and Corey Slade decided to do one. They did one for about three weeks, couldn't be bothered with it. It was a bit too hard. So Mitch messaged me and said, do you want to have a go? Yeah, all right, I'll have a crack at it. And uh, from there, it sort of snowballed into an absolute monster that I wasn't prepared for. And now we are, we're broadcasting nearly five nights a week. 
That's a fairly huge size crack that you've given it. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been full on, and it it's been a uh, very very stressful uh, ride. Uh, so much so, I actually walked away from it for twelve months back in twenty sixteen. Actually, twelve months away from V eight Online and from V eight Scops, and just raced myself and sort of hung around and helped out the uh, the the league side of things, admin side of things with uh, the uh, OSR guys, just sort of. Act as a bit of an advisor and outside ear to things and, and help them out a little bit. And um, then from there, build a new house and had the ability to stream. So I thought, oh, I'll get myself a new PC and start streaming and started up my own personal channel. And I'm like, oh, I might as well have a crack. And said to Fonty, I'll take over doing the Monday Night V8s again. And now uh, all of a sudden I'm broadcasting everything and it's been really, really fun and I've loved every minute of it. You know, mate, uh talk of timing mate like you streaming is the thing these days you've got people streaming games and making money out of it so why not dip your toe into it too mate so no, i've never never yeah. been any good at playing games either so that's probably the better way to do it <laughs> yeah neither mate if, if We've you all can't given... play commentate <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm right i'm still not good at that either yeah well there's a there's a few there's definitely a few people out there trying to give the stream game uh, a bit of a push with uh hobo and emily jones obviously the most well-known uh, people out there. Um, yeah, they're probably the two biggest in Australia. There's a few others out there that are doing a very, very good job too. But, yeah, they're probably the two most well-known. Emily's doing a great job. And uh, I know she's a little bit burnt out from the V8 and hopefully she can revigorate that. But she's uh, she's done a great job in getting herself out there. And Hobbo had done a really, really good job of just with his YouTube channel. Now the fact he's streaming as well, he's just taking it next level. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, we heard uh, before, only about a week ago, that they announced that the new AOSC series will be also broadcast on V8s Online. Uh, what made you pick that one up, mate? Uh, they approached us uh, a few weeks or a couple of weeks before the season ended last season and uh, asked us if we'd be involved. And uh, we'd heard rumblings and rumours around uh, RRTV deciding to uh, to close up shop and we we jumped at the opportunity for for something different. We thought it was a really good link between the Monday Night V8 series and also V8 Scops, almost like a feeder series, a, a second tier, something that's serious enough. It needs to be be taken seriously, but also has that little bit of fun element to it as well that you you can actually enjoy yourself if you if you don't want to take your racing all that seriously and want to go out there and have a little bit of fun and just have a bit of a drive. It's it's a really good link for us to match those two series in, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a really good fit for, for us at Vets Online. Uh, di- I wasn't overly keen on a Friday night broadcast, but uh, <laughs> Friday night's usually family night here for me, but uh, the late starts sort of have made it a little bit more appealing and uh, looking forward to it. I think it should be good fun and uh, really, really well run series. So, so looking forward to, to uh, having that on board with us in a few weeks time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that uh, Nori, you run the AOSC series at, uh, from time to time. You're going to give it a good crack this season? Yeah, no, the um, the thing that first drew me into running AOSC was the convenience of doing it on a Friday. And um, and being broadcasted was just another level. So having V8s online now step on and, and broadcast it, you feel like you're, you're with the big boys. You, that, I guess that from a driver's perspective, that's what it feels like. So it's massive to have you guys come on and, and take the take the reins with that one, but it's... It's definitely going to be something that fills the gap between uh, Monday night and Sunday when the when V8's official stop and V8 scops get going. Yeah, well, we also saw it as a, a good opportunity. Well, the series also saw it as a good opportunity to try and take things to the next level as well. They want to be considered a little bit more of a serious series, and we can help them do that too. And uh, obviously, keep the fun element that they do have in that series. But yeah, we want it want it to be fun. At the end of the day, sim racing should be fun and. Uh, we want to try and get that across, but at the same time, hope that uh, it can be taken as serious as it needs to. At the front of the field, the guys in the middle can have the fun and the guys at the back can actually have someone to race, which is what you want in a, in a proper series. That's, was that, was that a reference everyone. to me and Nori, was it? The... That was a reference to me, if you've ever seen me racing. You actually see the promo video, you see my car at the back of the field at one point, so... <laughs> The launch video has me right at the There's rear. There's nothing wrong with being at the back, mate. <laughs> oh, it's the only place I ever know I am. At least then you can hold the leader up at one point. <laughs> it's the only time I ever get on TV when I'm in a, in a broadcast race is when I'm getting lapped. On that note, sorry, Sam Blacklock. <laughs> <laughs> the very first time I was broadcasted, I was being lapped, and that did not end well. 
talking about broadcast races and things like that, there's a funny, funny broadcast that there was on uh, now two years ago. I think we need to get this back again. There's a broadcast on that race spot broadcast with the iRacing guys. It was called the Bragging Rights Challenge. It was Vance and Line versus LSR TV versus Race Spot versus GSRC versus Twitch streamers versus iRacing staff. We hold the Bragging Rights title, so we should uh, probably bring it back. But uh, there, there was three races, three different tracks, three different cars, and uh, we, we didn't really know what the grid was going to be, and it was all random. Somehow I started on pole in one of the races and started in fourth on the other. Was it reverse take- grid? No, well, no, we didn't do qualifying. It was just <laughs> random grid. <laughs> right. So I got the, the luck of the draw, and uh, it, it was very, very fun. But I got taken out in uh, in one of the races, and... Nim actually sent me a message mid-race going, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> so uh, so Nim, who was in the race at the same time, was uh, he'd already got taken out and was watching. He's like, well, that's not very nice. The guy took me out. But um, I was actually going, okay, I started in first and was in the lead for a bit of a broadcast race for a tiny little bit. So I have led a broadcast race before. Well, look, that's, uh, that's what Max Bantz is for. <laughs> I can't race it. That's the issue. I'm going to have to find someone else to broadcast Max Bands, because I'd have a chance at finish 10th. Can, can, yeah. I'm all up with that. Can, Probably uh, need to finish like 25th or something for me to have a chance. Uh, it'd help if Cam Dance turned up for his broadcast shift. <laughs> <laughs> in saying that, you should have seen the livery you had planned for that. That was hilarious. He, uh, but in true Max, fan, in Max Bands fashion, he actually went out on the grog instead of turning up to race. So I guess that's fair enough. That's probably I, legit. I, f- really. I feel for Max Bands, that's exactly what you're meant to do. Except you meant to turn up and race on the grog. <laughs> I, I won't comment as to whether I did or did not do that. <laughs> I, th- I heard a few drinks going on there that night, Chris. <laughs> you yeah, really well, needed some in the comms box the way it was going. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, talking of uh, AOSC, um, look, there's, there's a fair few V8 races that are broadcasted out there. Um, there's... Like people like AOSC back back when they were with our uh, TV and the lesser known but steadily growing uh, Wheelie Bins TV um, and among others, um, but none have done anywhere near as well as V8s online. Um, with all due respect to the other channels, what do you think you've done to garner the success, and what do you think that's contributed the most? Uh, I'm my harshest critic, so. I uh, am never, ever happy with a broadcast and want to improve every single time. I try and learn something every broadcast as well. So I think that's a big key for me is I want to get better every single time I do a broadcast. I don't think there's ever a point where you're at a level you should feel comfortable. I think that's with everything. When you're driving, when you're racing, when you're commentating, when you're broadcasting, you should be always looking to improve and always trying to do something different, something better each time you go and do it. I, I actually 100% agree with you there, Jay. That is the key motto that, that I take towards my racing and that sort of thing. So 100% agree that if you're your own critic and you're always wanting to push yourself that bit further, your product is going to be 10,000 times anyone else's on the market. Yeah, well, you, you really have to be. I mean, if you want to be competitive in a really competitive environment, you want to compete with the the big guns, you, you really have to be your harshest critic, your own harshest critic, and you, you shouldn't be happy with what you've done. You should never be resting on your laurels and you should be trying to improve. So that for me is the biggest thing. And I know uh, talking to, to guys from other broadcast channels, I do a bit of work with uh, the guys at GSRC and uh, I know they're exactly the same. They try and improve every single time. They're never happy with their product. They always want to try and improve. And I think that's the key, always wanting to try and do something better and bigger and, and more improved every time. And um, through what we've done this year in V8 Scots, we've definitely taken things to the next level. And I know that other broadcasters have watched what we've done in our uh, broadcast this year. And I think uh, a few have, have, have copied a few of our techniques and what we've done. I mean, the, the side-by-side, the picture-in-picture, it had been done before, but never been done in a way that we had done it. So, uh that, that was pretty cool to be one of the first to do it in that style of format with a one uh, one camera live, one camera on replay, and then at the same time being able to have two live pitches at the same time. That was uh, something very different uh, from what we'd had before. Every other time we'd had it, it was two live pitches at the same time as opposed to one live, one replay, or, or vice versa, or both live, or both replay. If we wanted to, we could do that at the same time. So I think that was that was pretty cool to be... Uh, what we could tell was the first, but um, yeah, yeah, it's it's always about pushing the limit and trying to do something different and trying to improve every time. 
Mate, I uh, I stumbled upon a link to your behind the scenes uh, Twitch. Was it a Twitch yeah, that stream? Was terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. That, that was terrible, mate. Mate, I would like I to say it. we want to <laughs> see more. <laughs> yeah, I would love to do more behind the scenes stuff. We actually one night, uh, Bo, Zach, and myself did record uh, stuff. We were going to put a video together, but never really went any further than that because the recording got. Uh, didn't work properly at my end, so uh, we didn't really do it. But I, I would love to do more behind the scenes. The reason I had to stop it was that uh, the uh, the output was starting to affect the uh, the on track cars. It was glitching a little bit with the cars, so I stopped it just to make sure that that wasn't causing the issue. But um, yeah, I, I would love to do more behind the scenes. I think it's really important to help keep people engaged and actually help people understand how much work goes on. I mean, uh, one thing about um, iRacing and sim racing as an eSport in comparison to other eSports is that we lose the person element of, of our eSport. We watch, um, watch any Twitch stream of an eSport and you have people standing around opposite other people playing against each other. When we're broadcasting a sim race, we've got people from all around the world, but you don't know who they are. That's the real key and the, and the real thing that's missing in uh in sim racing as an esport and that's something that we are working on behind the scenes as well to try and work out ways that we can help humanize our sim sim racing as an esport i think that's the uh, the thing that uh is really missing and uh yeah i'd love to do more behind the scenes to help that as well yeah absolutely and obviously that's something we're trying to um get out there with with the the flat chat podcast v8 scops edition yeah it's a, a real tough one too because um you know, it'd be easy to say, oh, let's just get a webcam feed from every driver and send it through and we could put it in the broadcast. But, you know, how, we how need a better in- NVN for that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how many people's internet or PCs would be able to handle it? I mean, you've got Dame Warren who's driving on a Mac with like 20 frames a second and <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, people whose potato internet struggles to even race on iRacing, let alone output a stream. And some people have to use their mobile data to make sure that they don't drop out and you know, that sort of thing means that it can't happen, but yeah, we're trying to work out ways that we can help uh, the broadcast side of things and help humanise things. And I think promoting guys that are streaming on Twitch, I think uh, that's very, very important as well to uh, to have those guys compliment what we do, I think it is a really cool thing. And I uh, wouldn't mind doing some things with some of the, the Twitch streamers and maybe work on like a, a side-by-side of you know, parts that we've had in their broadcasts with theirs and, and you know, gel them together somehow. I'm not sure how you can do it, but yeah, I think something like that would be a cool, cool thing to do. But uh, yeah, hopefully in the next few years, we might be able to do more things like that. Well, it's definitely getting bigger. I mean, there's, there's no doubt the streaming world is only growing and um, we're just tapping into, uh, so you're just tach- you're just tapping into um, what everyone is after. Like people, not everyone can be real life racers, um, but you can still be relatively well known. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all want to be real life racers, but um, fortunately, a lot of us don't have the the, the time, the money, the ability. It's probably the Definitely main thing the in ability. my case. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but we can still through the V8s online platform. Uh, they put up such a great broadcast, and you know, it can make people you know feel a part of the action, and um, you know leave going yep cool i i achieved something um which is really good i think too the the thing with it is you you need to make everyone feel like it is a show you need to make everyone feel like all right i've made the broadcast this is going to be cool this is going to be massive if you don't do that you're selling everyone else short like i mean if if you if you're making your first ever broadcast race and it's shit to watch then you're not really going to tell your friends you're on it, are you? I don't know. I still tell everyone I'm on a broadcast race no matter <laughs> where I am. <laughs> well, but you get what I mean. I mean, if you see yeah. Joe yeah, Blow on a potato and he's holding his phone up against his, stream, his uh, screen doing a broadcast or what he calls a broadcast, you, you're not really going to go and say, hey, look, I'm on a broadcast. You, you want, to, want it to be a professional show and that's the, the real key to uh, to try and hopefully get, get out there is that you really have to, from our end, we have to be as professional as we can to help promote if we can help promote uh sim racing and i racing then we're going to get more people driving we get more people driving we get more competitive races we get more people racing means that we can actually have more races and uh hopefully then we can uh grow again and and get the cycle going and get more people involved i guess it also does make it that it it will evolve not only this series but it evolve the broadcast 
and it'll keep pushing it further because we're really early on in esports online presence. So going forward, it's only going to need to get bigger to support itself. Yeah, you're right there. I think too the the thing with uh, sim racing as an esport too. Yeah, I, I think it's really untapped as well. I, I mean, real series out there know it exists and know what it is, but they don't know what to do with it. So you look at the likes of supercars, they know it's there, they know what it is, but they're not sure of how to use it and how to evolve it and how to involve as many people as they can in the best way that they can do it. You look at Formula E. Formula E is probably one of the only real-life series out there that actually is doing esports properly in the only unfortunate for them is they're using a platform that isn't really working for them. But uh, other than that, there's not many out there that have probably done it well uh, up until this point. NASCAR, you probably would say, have been the best the whole entire world over in uh, in how they've presented esports out there with what they've done with iRacing and also with NASCAR Heat. Um, although it is a bit of a, a simcade, it, it, it's still a good product to help launch people in and the people that you know, want something a little bit fun, they can do that. And if they want to go more serious, then they evolve from that into iRacing. And you know, I think a lot of real world series really need to think about how they're, they're going to tackle the esports and how they're going to to involve esports in, in their futures because it definitely is the way that everything is going forward and everywhere is looking towards. It is, it is really important that you say that because F1 has made a massive kick with its esports online presence. And... I feel like Australia's got a really untapped market with supercars, with their esports, and I feel as though they could really use some advice in that department because they're they're missing the mark as far as I can see with this Forza platform. Yeah, well, cast your mind back to 2011 when Vets Online first started. We uh, were working with a wonderful gentleman named Vern Nortgard. Now, Vern was an IRC member, used to race in Top Split. He worked for Big Pond... And his main job was to operate the V8 supercar website. Now, from that, every single Monday night, Monday night broadcast race update on the uh, the V8 supercar website every Tuesday with an article, photos, and a link to the broadcast. Our broadcasts were embedded in the V8 supercar website. Supercars called him an idiot, called him stupid, told him he had no vision. He left supercars and now works for Channel 7 or working for Channel 7 and Foxtel. Uh, making all of their uh, TV apps and things like that. He heard about the uh, the announcement that they made and said that they were doing a Forza thing. He sent me a message and saying, isn't this disappointing? Posted on the thing saying, oh, isn't it funny what they used to do back in 2011 was stupid. They could have been a world leader. So the fact that they've had it, gave it away, it, it, it's really sad to see. We used to have, well, there's been a Bathurst winner winner Monday night for supercar race. There's been... Uh, four current V8 supercar drivers that have won races in the Monday night V8 series, being Shane, Shane Van Gisberg and Scott McLaughlin, Chaz Mostert, and um, yeah. Richie Stanaway. Bit, bit of a tragic so, over here for Chaz, mate. Well, Chaz actually won one of the first ever Monday night V8 series of field races. There you go. There's your trivia for the day. Um, but, yeah, so back then they had it. They had everything. They had, had presence. They had uh, a broadcast on their channel. This is five years before anything to do with Forza, anything to do with any of that. This is 2011, 2012. They had all this and they gave it away. They said that this is stupid. This is never going to take off. This is never going to be a thing. So, uh, yeah, it, they've been there. They gave it away. I think they're really hurting for that now. If they had have kept that presence, kept involved with iRacing, kept pushing them for new content, saying, hey, we want a new supercar. Hey, we want, we want more tracks. We want this. We want that. If there was that involvement and that engagement, I feel that things would be very, very different in the Australian landscape now in regards to sim racing. But, uh, yeah, things are a little bit sad, especially when you see the likes of, of those guys that, that race in real life. You, Van Gisberg and McLaughlin, Holdsworth, Davison, all Perkett, those guys that Deep are. Pasquale. Perk, yeah, they're all iRacing members and not a single one of them drive the V8 because they think that the, the Porsche... Or the BMW GT3 drives more like the V8 than the V8 does. You know that there's a serious problem with it, unfortunately. Well, there's definitely no um, there's no problem with the way that you guys run your broadcast, and a big part of those broadcasts is the commentators. Yep. Uh, big special mention to Southpaw Racer Reese Gardner and Mister Hashtag Do You Mind Jake Jake Speary. 
You also have a whole array of commentators. Jay, I wanted to ask you, how did you find these guys? Um, so Reese and I, we'll start with Reese because, well, actually, no, we'll go back to Sandman because Sandman's probably the first that come on board with me. Absolutely. Um, Madison Down sent me a video of this guy that did a YouTube thing about V8 supercars and said, he's on iRacing, he's pretty good, love to have a chat. Right, I get him on. From that moment on, Sam and I have been really, really close friends. Um, my partner and Sam Man's partner are very, very good friends. When we went to the Bathurst 12-hour, we actually went together. We stayed at the same caravan park. We've been mates for a long time now. So, um, yeah, Sam Man was the first, and uh, I need to thank Madison for, for that hookup to get me and Sam Man uh, chatting together. And, and yeah, Sam Man unfortunately moved to uh, Brisbane last year when we were about to start filming more episodes of Short Shift, which was our, uh, I guess, TV show, you would say, that we, we put together. We did eight episodes of that together, and that was really fun. But, yeah, so Sandman was the first, and, and Madison hooked me up with that that link. Uh, Reese was the next one to come into the group, and he, he was a, a former teammate with myself when I raced on Dynamic Sim Sports, which was the old Extreme Gimmick. Sim Gear Racing or XSG. Reese came on as a pit reporter and was really, really shy, really was not too keen. Reese was really not keen to do it. He thought he was going to be horrible. Reese had no confidence, didn't want to do it at all. You fast forward to now and you would not know that he is the same person. We knew that Reese would be a natural at it. Uh, we threw him in the deep end with it and and he has just evolved into the uh, the main commentator that we have now we are we're really happy to have reese on board and and reese has been with us for five and a half years i think now i think mid or early 2013 i think he started doing pit reporting with us um when we had uh sebastian murray westberg who was another teammate of mine at that team as well dynamic sim racing uh dynamic sim sport i should say we were called at that point i think we had three Broadcasts a week, which was Monday night V8s. We did Wednesday Wednesday trucks and Thursday we did GT GT three or IMSA or uh, depended on the season. I think we we evolved that, but we had um, also at that point we had Clayton Brooks, who was the team manager at ANZ Motorsport. Quite a few guys who wanted to put their hand up and help out, which was always good because um, everyone knew we were doing it for nothing, and yeah, you know, we we. Just uh, we're doing it to help the better community, and and it, it really was good in that everyone helped out. We had a uh, a few funny broadcasts way back in the day as well. We had a broadcast that Josh Muggleton come on and helped me out when I I had no voice and I was crook as a dog. So um, I was sitting doing the directing, and uh, Muggo was challenged pre broadcast to add in as many song quotes as he could throughout the broadcast and in the spectator <laughs> chat. Oh wow. In the spectator <laughs> chat, other people that were in the race would throw song quotes to Muggo and Muggo would have to try and add them in. Now, I'm going to have to try and find that broadcast because I know it's saved on my old computer somewhere. I'm going to have to upload that because that was one of the most in- enjoyable, entertaining broadcasts I've ever, ever done where uh, Muggo was adding in, I think, he like 15 or 16 different song quotes throughout the broadcast. But that was that was really fun. We also used to have Scott McLaughlin come in when he was racing Dunlop Series. He'd come oh, in wow. every now and again. And Sam and very, very good mates as well. So they they you jump in every now and again and come in and commentate with us on Monday night. And I also used to have Aaron Russell as well jump in and commentate. He actually used to run a Vats online logo on his helmet back in twenty twelve in the Dunlop oh, series. Wow. So uh, and an XSG logo on his helmet. So yeah, he used to uh, help support us back in Dunlop series 2011, 2012. Who else have we had come and go? Jeez, I had plenty come and go. But uh, I guess now we've got uh, Cameron Dance who we uh, asked him to come and jump on when he he's uh, been commentating uh, in R Factor leagues and stuff with uh, his job at Hyper New Zealand. So uh, it was a natural fit for us to ask him to come and jump on, and he's been uh, improving and evolving every time he jumps in. Uh, Bo Albert, who uh, who I've watched a couple of his videos that he'd been commentating himself, and he'd been commentating a few Project Cars videos and stuff like that, and I'm like come on and jump on with us, mate. You're, you're too good to be doing that. And he's been uh, heading the Monday night broadcast pretty much ever since. So that's been really good. And then he asked uh, Zach, who uh, was his teammate at Evolution Racing Team at the time. Now they've teamed up together in their new team, Atlas Esports. And those two work really, really well together on Monday nights, which is good. Brock Caddy 
who does Wednesday nights with Reese, he was doing Rallycross over on Double R T V and uh I, I was listening in and thought he did a really good job and no Brock from uh, jumping over and talking to the guys at ASM. Natural fit for him to come over as well when he wasn't getting much uh, much commentary work over there. So asked him to come over and he's been loving it over with us ever since. So he's going to uh, help do the new Wednesday night Porsche series as well. Also got Corey Ott who's jumped in to help us out with some endurance races and, and things like that and put his hand up for that. We've also got Thomas Hind who's very, very good mates with Reese. Um Probably yeah, we've actually had at, Thomas at on moment. one of our podcasts. Um, yeah. uh, with the he, he co-hosted the Formula One podcast. He's definitely got a lot of ability. Yeah, he's actually uh, a qualified journalist, so very, very accomplished to, to have on. So great to have him as part of the crew. He knows how to talk and knows how to, to continue to talk, which is <laughs> one thing some people forget to do on a broadcast. Sometimes people just talk about what's going on and then stop. But Tom, commentating with Hinzi, if, you, if you're not... Uh, harsh enough to try and get a word in, you can often miss out. I do remember uh, there's a broadcast. <laughs> I feel sorry you. To Hinsey, sorry to Hinsey. <laughs> no, we love you, Hinsey, mate. Saying, we love you, mate. But there was a very, very broadcast that Thomas Hins and Cameron Dancer commentating. And Cam sits back and, and really waits for you to, to throw it open to him to have a turn. And Hinsey's just continues to go, and you almost need to, to cut him off to stop him. <laughs> But it got to about 40 minutes that Hinsey continued to talk and Cam hadn't said a word. I had to pop up and said, Cam, are you still awake? And uh, he's like started to say something. So it was, it was quite funny. So, um, yeah, I, I did enjoy, enjoy that one. I know those guys will have a little bit of a laugh at that because Cam from that point has really improved out of sight. And um, Cam's turned into one of our best um, color commentators. He's a really, really good analyst and very, very good driver as well. Very, very underrated driver. So, um, Cam yeah, top split Cam last Dance is definitely, yep. yeah Cam Dance is definitely uh, one of our keys to our, our group at the moment love having Cam on the crew there's one person that you haven't mentioned I'm assuming yeah, that you're going to say uh, uh, that he is a he was a shy mind when he first joined and uh, well, so Jake, Jake jumped in to, to help us uh, we wanted to, he was watching the final round of our scops last year and was just watching and someone in the chat I think it might have been Brenton O'Brien said Jake jump in the comms box I'm like yeah come on in and uh, ever since then I haven't been able to get him out so that's pretty much how it's gone now he actually messaged me um, early in the season asking if he could be a part of our scops and as soon as he asked that he is uh, whether whether you, you love him or hate him, he is definitely one of the big voices in in uh, in sim racing in general. Um, absolutely love his ambition. I love that he is willing to speak his mind. There's too many people that that love to pussyfoot around and won't say what they're really thinking. He isn't scared to. He doesn't care who he offends. If it creates a bit of controversy, then we want a controversy usually results in uh, more people wanting to know what's going on. So. Jake's been an integral part of the success of V8 Scops this year and uh, also through his articles as well and um, the way he analyzes things. And you actually, look, I think having Jake as a part of it as well has helped grow the stature of V8 Scops because you look at some of his articles, the last article he wrote, he wrote about how good V8 Scops is and he actually called it the best league in sim racing at the moment. So that uh, that shows you where we're at with, with V8 Scops at the moment. And Jake is a, is a key part of that as well as Reese. Those two are the voices of Vout Scops for this year and, and they will be uh, for the rest of this year and, and it's, it's really important for them to be there. Well, I might need to uh, recall my question about Jake, um, which was, have you ever had to ban Jake Speary from Discord? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't yet. 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 All right. <laughs> there been, still there been a few that's pending, mate. Been that's a pending. Few band, so, no, no, Jake's, Jake's pretty good. Jake's more than willing to speak his mind and, and I absolutely respect him for that. We, uh, we actually talk quite a lot behind the scenes. His uh, eye ranking points are actually helping me out quite a lot with that. And the spreadsheet for that is actually on my computer. So that, that whole eye ranking points that he has got together, I've helped him out with that and helped him evolve that. Uh, throughout the year, it's been very, very tough. We actually used to have a Google Doc. It got that big that Google Doc wouldn't work anymore. So we actually <laughs> had to, uh, to scrap that and start all over again, essentially. So it's been a really tough uh, thing to get that all together. It's starting to work properly and we'll get that out soon as well. Yeah, awesome. And and look, Jake, uh, if you're listening, mate, uh, your he time is coming, mate. Your time is coming. Uh, he will be now. I'll tell him that I've we've received to mention- we've received the invite. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, 
we were very uh, happy to have you on the podcast, Jay. We really love what you've put together on V8s Online. We love watching the V8 Scops broadcast, obviously, um, and we really appreciate you joining us on the Flat Chat podcast. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure, guys. Thank you for having me on. I just wanted to once again thank Jay Kennedy for joining us on the podcast. It was really a privilege to have him on the show as he's such an integral part as to what goes on in V8 Scops and online broadcasting. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, great interview, Chris and, and Norrie. I'm really sorry I couldn't be there. It was one of those ones I really wanted to be a part of, but unfortunately work, work was calling. But um, such a nice guy too. I mean, wow. You wouldn't want a better person in kind of charge of all this kind of stuff and moving it to a different platform that's going to increase – uh, exposure by quite a lot as we might see but um, yeah such a such a nice and, and down to earth uh, character. Yeah man I couldn't agree more it's um, sim, sim racing in general and the show New Zealand communities um, more specifically uh, super lucky to have guys like Jay around that have been sort of here right from foundations of, of the sim and, and doing this kind of thing just out of the love of it and, uh, you know, like it makes what we do so much more than it otherwise would be having guys like that that put their time and effort into turning stuff into um, like a really cool show, you know. Yeah, just to further that point, like as you were saying, Chris, massive thanks to Jay for coming on and speaking to us on the podcast. We often forget there are 40-odd people driving those cars, but there's a couple of people up there driving those cameras and and driving that part of the broadcast as well. So it's a whole effort to turn out what we all just do as passion and they all do it as passion as well. So it was great to have them, um, or Jay in particular, come and speak to us and tell us about his little part of the world. Yeah, and look, on that too, you know, there's um, so much work that goes into something like we do little podcasts and stuff and there's other uh, online broadcasts that are out there which are doing fantastic jobs. But the way that um, they've set up V8s online that's integrating into the iRacing eSports sports network, um, I don't think a lot of people really realise exactly how much work is involved. So, yeah, it's good that we got the interview with Jay so we can kind of get a little bit of a glimpse. But, man, those guys do work for it really, really hard. Yeah, um, pretty, I've seen a photo of, uh, of his setup of four, four or five screens going and so many different apps open all at once and – JRT and oh my god, my brain couldn't keep up keep up with that kind of stuff. <laughs> a podcast doesn't do it for you, Gene. I'm struggling just <laughs> talking, mate. Let alone to, uh, <laughs> to get that all across to a viewer uh, to an audience. Well, as a VR user, you could definitely get the camera work going with the VR headset if you were to do some broadcasting, like just a point and shoot type of scenario. <laughs> From the driver's eye view, <laughs> literally. I'd watch that on Twitch, I'll give you that. Crazy man in his basement, he's throwing his head around drastically. <laughs> it's actually a broadcast, I swear to God, I'm broadcasting online V8 supercar racing. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, mate, sure. Sure you are, mate, yeah. <laughs> just, just waiting for If I that. tried to do anything other than run Oculus and run the sim at the same time, my computer would just crap itself so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just fry. Hey, by the way, just on a, a, a bit of a different note, you know, the interview we did with Jay just then, it was quite a while away and interesting enough, I just have to point out, it was about the week before he actually went in to put those two uh, broadcast networks together. So that was the interview just before V8s Online kind of melded into iRacing Esports Network for Scops. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, pretty awesome innovation that they've come up with there, eh? Like combining a few of the different broadcasters from around the place into one sort of network, as they call it. And, um, yeah, the numbers seem to uh, back the, back that up too with the subscribers already over 4,000. And, and Wow. Yeah, like that's that's almost at the, at the level of V8s online beforehand. So, yeah, well, that's I right. Mean, yeah. That's the advantage of having, races, uh, which is fantastic. That's the advantage of having the pre-recorded uh, interview is that we've actually got some stats to back it up. Um, the yeah. viewership for the... Um, Rounds that we're about to cover off Laguna Seca and Interlagos was up. Wait for it, 
fifty percent, which is an amazing number um, in in viewership increase for a oh, massive um, congratulations to them. Yeah, all, absolutely. All yeah, the congratulations, around. all the guys, guys involved in iRacing Esports Network. So moving on, uh, we had the next race we had was Laguna Seca, and Laguna Seca was a highly uh, controversial round, I suppose, in that in that they ran Laguna Seca. Hello. In, Instead of Belle Isle, you're right, <laughs> right on it, Gene. Belle Isle was the one that everyone wanted because it was a new track out. Everyone was on there just smashing themselves up against the wall at Belle Island for like a week because it's so hard to drive around. Was it only because it was a new track? Like I got the impression that people were like anti-Laguna. I wasn't sure why, but it seemed to be a like maybe if it was um, going to coincide with a different round at a different track, maybe the, the sentiment wouldn't have been so strong for Belle Isle, possibly. I'm not sure. It's just the impression I got. See, I get the impression that Laguna Seca has a bit of a hated appeal within within the Scop series based on the reaction. Um, I feel it was just because Belle Isle was new. People just wanted to try the new track. As we saw at Laguna Seca, it was a crash fest anyway, so having brick walls and no runoff area was not going to help that round be any different. I uh, I feel that they did the right thing running Laguna because if people hate it so much, how does it keep ending up on the sh- the schedule? They did run uh, they did run the Australian on Supercars Championship there, and it was a it was a crash fest. Now that's not to take anything away from AOSC; they do a great job as also on V8 Online. Um, but yeah, it was an absolute crash fest. There was a lot of damaged cars throughout the field. At the end of the day, with the series, what you want is like cohesiveness and you know for things that are like put in place to remain sort of you know everyone knows the story everyone knows what's going on you know you don't want to be chopping and changing last minute as such and throwing yeah like it's a credibility issue in some ways isn't it to further that it's it's a bit like a real world f1 saying we're not going to run monaco this year people didn't like it Uh, it doesn't happen in the real world so why is it going to happen in the sim world yeah, true, true. And look, I think it's ironic if you think that Bell Island wasn't put on because of the crash fest uh, or the, <laughs> the pending crash fest. I think it was to do with, um, and I'll get to that in a sec, but I think it was to do with not having, it wasn't tested. There wasn't enough testing done on how the servers and the the broadcast would hold up with that track. I think they have to do, um, like Jay and the team over there, have to do extensive testing to make sure that it all work out. And the AOSC um, broadcast actually did have quite a few errors and problems with cars flying off the track and looking like they were all beat up and smashed up. I remember watching that and seeing cars look like Transformers because of the cars. We just had bits coming off them and arms and legs popping out the <laughs> sides of them yep. um, where they weren't even hitting the wall, but they looked like they had. So that didn't look very good. It would have been a bit of a disaster to have the second race out broadcast on the new network with that craziness going on. So I can, can totally see why they didn't take that risk. I completely understand. But just to the Crash Fest uh, irony is that Laguna was a Crash Fest anyway. Uh, Corey Preston stopped up in the corkscrew. I called it the corkscrew car park. Um, <laughs> very that was a bit nice. That's there. very good, that one. <laughs> that was but probably that was the biggest That was the biggest crash, I think, yeah. Uh, Gene, Gene had a bit of a run in there too. Oh, Gene, you were racing in it, mate. Yeah, that's right. I was. Um, race one, yeah. I thought things were... Uh, all falling my way, to be honest. I think I made about eight spots into turn one and then didn't even make it through the exit of turn two and hit a stationary car and that was me done. But um, I really enjoyed the racing, to be honest. Like, okay, there was, it was a bit bit of mayhem to begin with and stuff, but it settled down and as a track, it, it promoted good racing and like lots of sort of opportunities and potential for, for racing and battles and passing spots and from the driver's seat, do you hate Laguna Seca? No, not at all. I don't hate any track, to be honest. Some of the you should hear what Laguna said about others. you, though. I mean, I wouldn't want to race the V8 round Charlotte Infield or something like that. But It's fun. Yeah. You should try it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really get the whole, like, let's not race here because I think it's crap or whatever. I'll race wherever the racing's at, you know. I just want to get into top split, and once <laughs> I've done that, I'm like, yo. So you brought up your your first lap uh, little problem that you had. That seems a bit of bit of a bit of a factor in a lot of these races. 
um, how can we stop this? Is there a way to stop it or is it just a frame of mind? I mean, you're talking about a super, super competitive, like you look at the times for any round, the, the amount of cars within no seconds of each other is just ridiculous. And it's a big, heavy, lumbering V8 with crap tyres and you've got 40 of them like all on the same piece of real estate at once. It's bound to happen. In a way, like some kind of gets made a bit too much of a big deal about some of it, like it's messy racing or whatever, you know. Like It's sort of just part and parcel of what we do. V8s on tight, twisty tracks with cold tyres on lap one and, and people that want to make spots. It's, it's inevitable, you know. Like yep. to some point, like it, there gets to a point where, you know, it's, some of it's stupidity or lack of foresight or whatever. I think um, the series admins have, have tried to do the only thing they can do, which is the license and penalty points and and crack down quite hard on that. And that's borne out by the fact that we're not seeing certain names yeah, with the band, rounds with because the band. they're having to serve yep. a, a server holiday. Yeah, you know. Like, I don't know what more the admins could really do to... It's up to the drivers to, to put on a good show. Well, there are lots of drivers out on holidays, like you mentioned, the the way you said it, Gene. Taking a holiday. Yeah. Taking a little... Ask to take a bit of leave. Yeah. Yeah. There's I'm, quite a few going on I'm at the moment. I'm busy convincing myself that's not the reason I'm starting to make top splits these days. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if all those guys come back... You need back, to qualify lower than that uh, before that's an issue. Everyone's back from holiday. Two again. Judging on his pace at the moment, you've been hanging around too much with a uh, certain Chris Cassie. That's why he paces up. You look out, <laughs> second <laughs> new, new new abducted alien, Christopher Cassie. But that's yeah, that's Mate, another point. Uh, yeah, I was going to say I won't. I will mention into Lagos uh, wait, in, in wait a minute. Wait until uh, Chris makes his debut in top split, and then we can go on to calling him an alien. <laughs> it's because of the elite high performance sports environment that PRA promotes. You know, within the team. Oh, yeah, so by the way, we are absolutely non-biased as the Flat Chat Podcast. Cassie, Nori, and myself, <laughs> we are here, not here to promote our team at all. Though all four of us now, like we're all here in the same team. So um, anyone listening, just want to make sure that the uh, image is not <laughs> put out there that we're a team podcast. This is absolutely a non-biased, non-team podcast. But, mate, Gene, now that you're here, mate, go for it. You can, you can talk up the team as much as you want. Yeah, what's going on? At, what What is going on at PRA, Gene? Tell us what's what's happening. What's the news? No Brady Myers anymore. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, in the last wee while, a great deal's been going on, really. Been a lot of things like, yeah, driver movements, implementing new ways of trying to, trying to work together to, you know, all collectively improve and on areas that we're possibly a bit weak at and, and just grow the team and get a bit more of a, a solid footing amongst the community and get the PRA brand or name or whatever taken a bit more seriously or with a bit more respect, if that's the way you want to put it. But, you know, like I'm sure you three know about, I'm always on about how perception plays a big part in what we do, you know, and not always that much or as much as you may think between what us as a, a more grassroots kind of team is doing compared to, like, the teams that we all look up to, like a TTR or a, a TTL or EIT, and we wonder, like, what is it that they do that we're not? It actually isn't all that much, you know, that we're falling down on. It's just a, a perception kind of thing, you know? But I think it gives you guys a really good leaping point because you've had a, you've had a bit of a mix-up there with losing Brady. He was known as the PRA alien. But you've had a bit of a mix-up with him going. The team needs a bit of a sort of, I'd call it a refresh, if it were, just to sort of, you want to take the next step. You want to be this team that, you know, we're PRA, let's let's fight this. Yep. I mean, the Brady thing, in one sense, it was inevitable. Like, we've all seen the writing on the wall from a fair way out that, you know, eventually he would go and move on to, to a team that he felt was going to give him a better chance at, at achieving his goals, which is podiums and, and wins and scops. That's what he's all about. We're happy to see him go and, and wish him all the best. But, but on the other hand, you can't help but be disappointed that your gun driver has vacated the seat. But then the team in general has taken it in quite an awesome, positive way, I reckon. In some way, it's actually helped bind the rest of us tighter and we've been online more often together, sharing thoughts, sharing data and all sort of working with a little more energy and, and determination to, to make that 
next step up and crack a top split or beat that guy that you that you compare yourself against every week. And I think it's borne out in the results that a few of us have been having recently. <coughs> Kissy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kissy. Um, well, I'm super stoked what? I've made three top How many people were banned now. last few rounds? Yeah. <laughs> well, <this> is, <laughs> don't burst my bubble, bro. Come on. Not because of those people not being there. I'm legit. I'm there. I'm only just there. And you wouldn't know I'm there because you don't see me because I'm at the back. But Oh, we do. We we do. Hey, listen, we may not see you, but <laughs> Gene the Gene Genie, we do hear you. We do hear of you. Maybe Jake Speary needs to rub on Gina G. Genie's great magical oh, G gosh. lamp. This is a G-rated podcast. I, I don't think it is anymore, mate. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll, we could talk about Speary later. I just noticed that, that Jake Speary had um, his debut for, for uh, the development series. <laughs> and I was wondering if there's a commentator out there who's got a, a name for Speary because I'm sure Gina would like to throw a name or two in the, um, in the hat for that one. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, when when you give yourself your own nickname, it says a lot about the person, you know. Hashtag do you mind. That's right, Chris. Yeah, stop calling yourself big man. Chris the big man, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Genie is one thing, all right, but, you know, come on. The Gene Genie pales in comparison to the Scarlet Pimpernel, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> Jake Burton, you absolute legend. That is a nickname that you – that is one to keep. I don't know what the hell it means, Scarlet but Pimpernel. damn, it sounds good. And so long as it sounds good, it'll stick. I reckon we can dial it back to uh, Laguna Seca. <laughs> it's a good idea. Uh, Let's great. talk about the it's things great. that we're talking about. Great to hear about uh, the improvements that PRA has made in the in – the, um, and we look forward to seeing what's happening going forward. Now moving on to the results for Laguna Seca, we are going to cover it a little bit. As I said, there was a lot of pandemonium, so a lot of things um, happened throughout that, that race. But in the end, uh, some pretty familiar faces at the front. Um, we saw with the – there was two races for split one uh, where we saw Jared Philsell from TTR with Madison down in second place. And Richard Hampstead in third. So pretty familiar faces up there. So the crashes didn't really change things up the front too much. Um, and moving on to race two, we uh, obviously saw a very exciting start from uh, Josh Muggleton, who later on we found out jumped the start. And um, unfortunately, he ran into his teammate, Sam Blacklock. That is not how you want to uh, start off a race like that. Have you guys uh, ever ever run into each other? Any any sort of incidents you guys can think of? I can think of an endurance race where you don't put your teammates' car into the wall. Yeah, thanks, Nori. <laughs> I know that uh, team drink and drive nights are all about running into each other as fast as you possibly can. But um, that's not that was something we were doing a uh, broadcast race. No, I can't that, remember running into a teammate. That's right. The next drink and drive will be broadcast by V8 online, hopefully. <laughs> there you go, Max Pants, look out Leads me on to, so we are talking about uh, crashes before And we did mention the core crash, I'm going to bring it up again There was a crash between Scott Szlowski and Corey Preston uh, Where I believe Szlowski had a bit of an incident with someone prior And he was spinning the car back around Corey hit him and it just seemed like he parked it uh, Did you guys get a chance to, to see that incident? Yep. I saw the aftermath of it Were you in the race, Gene? Did you see it? First, first yeah, hand. I saw it first, and I came across it not long after it happened. I think it seemed like he'd uh, so on the on the broadcast, and it looked like Corey he ran into it, uh, and he, he did lose his bonnet. It just looked like he wouldn't let go of the brake. Now later on, we did hear from one of our teammates uh, from Cross Continental Motorsports that he had blown up. Does anyone know that the brake locks on when you blow up? Yeah, so the brake will hold if you're stationary. But I think I think the only thing adding confusion to that was yeah, the, the bonnet was gone, but there was no smoke, there was no engine pop, um, it didn't rev overly, so it just seemed like it was just bang, stop, get grab your grab your ticket and pay for your parking on the way out. Um, it, that's what it looked like. Well, after all that crazy action, we had Ethan Grigolt get his first win ever in V8. School. 
Ops. Uh, fantastic effort for ERT there. Um, with second position, you've got Madison down for TTR and Jake Burton in third position. So a few days after we recorded the interview with Jay Kennedy, we also had a view with uh, Trick Sim Sports driver Ross Rizzo, who is definitely um, a Trick Sim Sports as a team are definitely growing. They have uh, four very very fast drivers. So I think at the time we recorded, Forzan had just left um, his the PSS right and gone to Trick. It was about two days after the. Uh, Yes. Yeah, right, yeah. So, yeah, kind of apologies to Ross for putting it out kind of so far <laughs> away from when we recorded it because there were, were mentions and we, we kind of made a big deal that he was in fourth place in the Scups Championship where I think now he's... In fifth. He's only dropped one spot. <laughs> one spot, <laughs> yeah. Still a massively impressive yeah. result regardless. Look, I just do want to point out the irony of the interview and how Ross was in fourth place. It was a big deal. He was saying, oh, well, look at the the um, podcast has cursed might uh, get me a bit knocked down the ladder. And I think that the one we mentioned was, um, well, Jake, Jake Burton was okay. He didn't have a podcast as curse. He's fine. Uh, or maybe he was affected. But the irony is that Jake's the only one who's jumped in on the Scops uh, rankings at the moment. Yeah, he's sitting in, sitting in fourth position behind his teammate Madison Down. I really enjoyed speaking to Ross. Ross is sort of really down to earth sort of guy. He enjoys sim racing. And that leads me to the interview. So enjoy the interview with Ross Rizzo. So we are lucky enough to be joined by the person coming forth in the V8 Scop series at the moment uh, from Trick Sim Sports. Ross Rizzo, thanks for joining us, Ross. Thanks, guys. My pleasure. Nori, do you know Ross? Been watching Ross's uh, progression through this, this season of Scops? Well, when he's at the front of the second split of Scops pack, I'm at the back. So I've, I've seen his car from one angle, angle at least. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to say, he, Ross is the one who's taking those second split wins from you. Yeah, mate. I know. I just wanted I'm to familiar. point that out. <laughs> Maybe you guys can share some <laughs> tips when we uh, get off air. <laughs> I definitely think we need some race craft, craft tips from, from Ross, but if he's uh, willing to share them, that's another story. <laughs> oh, always, mate. <laughs> well, not that we can actually implement them. That's the, that's the trick, though, isn't it? <laughs> no, we, we can try. I'll send you the link to uh, where we'd like our grip hacks folder. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no incident points. Don't forget that one. No, on zero. That, that is zero. very, very impressive. Fourth place, and you're on zero penalty points for the season. One of two drivers in the top 20 alongside a big name of himself, Madison and down. Mate, you seem to just be putting together a pretty consistent season, mate. Yeah, it's something I kind of pride myself on is just staying out of trouble because it's just all I really seem to be good at, good at when I started. I was really hopeless, you know, with keep trying to be consistent initially and just when, you know, once off track started to rack up, I was like, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> so really focused on just keeping the car on the track and that's just permeated throughout the remainder of um of my racing career. Are you telling me that Nori has a chance? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Nori's actually, he is our go-to when it comes to least off tracks. I think your development series run, Nori, you had like a bit of a, a run going with no, you got all the bonus points nearly every round in one season, didn't you? Yes. What I always thought was that the cleanest races are always the most consistent who are always the ones ending up the front end of the field. That's where I intended that to be. Well, that's definitely the case in the V8 Scop Series uh, this year with Madison down in third and Ross in fourth position. Now, Ross and uh, JC, you guys have met before. Uh, JC, did you maybe want to elaborate on some of that? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, Ross, we, we, we used to race at... Uh, <clears throat> on R Factor, and I'm not going to call it by the other name that you wanted me to call it, Kessie. It's you want uh, to remind that's me what, a, what that a pleb factor. <laughs> okay. Just had to go and say it, didn't you? I, I had to throw it in there. Just go and break our hearts. Exactly. Kessie, you know, you've got you to respect where, you, where you've come from. And I know that we all think that iRacing is the bee's knees, which it is, obviously. <laughs> but um, Do we? <laughs> but, you know, but the point being is that wherever you come from, pleb factor or Gran Turismo. Mario or Kart. Wherever. 
Destruction. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, R, R factor, whatever it is, the end of the story is that Ross, you were like really fast in anything that I ever saw you drive. I mean, mostly you used to drive the GT3s in that series, I remember. Yeah, I initially started with the mixed league and then GT, I, I really kind of struggled with anything that didn't have a wing on it. And then GT3 was one of those rounds and that's where I really started to find my stride. Then not long after they announced the fully fledged GT3 series. And then jumped into that and really surprised myself. It just clicked instantly. It was like one of those things, you know, you, you, find, you find something that suddenly, oh, I'm not actually bad at this, <laughs> so I'm going to press on with it. And the same sort of thing happened when I came on to iRacing. I struggled with the V8 and whatnot, just beelined for the GT3 and again found, found my home there. Well, I was going to say, I, w- I wanted to mention to the, to the guys, um, you know, we, we talk about a bit on this show, uh, a bit about progression and we get – a range of different people like yourself who's really at the top of your game and, and coming in the top five of scops and then we've got uh, development series talk as well i remember a few of us in the community back with the r factor days Lamp factor when you went over to i racing thanks for thanks for that note when you went over and, and joined your team i think it was pro force racing Correct, yep. you let us know that you were you were racing and that there was going to be broadcast and everyone was pretty excited i remember i tuned in and watched it and I saw your car running. I think you qualified somewhere in the twenties, and you, you made up maybe three or f- three positions or something. Up, you probably know better than me, but I remember that was the scenery of when you moved over, and I was like really surprised. I was like, Ross, what's he doing in twentieth? He should be winning. I, I I just thought that you'd just go in there and get a podium, but um, it's like it's not something you can just jump straight into from something like R Factor or Gran Turismo. It's, it, it takes time, and that was something I, I really learned from watching your progression. Yeah, I think one thing that iRacing is very good at that a lot of people don't recognize is making everyone look like amateurs, <laughs> regardless of where you came from as well, because you, you, can, you can come from any other series, uh, any other sim, and it totally takes you by surprise with the, with the physics engine. You can comment to the cows come home about whether they're accurate or not, but they're different to anything else. So it takes so long to grasp how that works and um, how my career kind of went was learning the sim first before picking a particular car because you've got to remember it's a new, new kind of experience. And once you learn the way the sim works, then you can start to specialise a little bit rather than learning the hard way, like, say, bashing your head a wall, uh, against a wall in the V8, doing dev series after dev series after Wednesday night after... Friday night after Saturday, et cetera, et cetera, and not really get anywhere because you haven't learned the sim and you're arguably learning in the hardest car on, on one of the hardest sims. How did you know that's how we did it? <laughs> yeah, when you said dev series after dev series, I was thinking, Chris, well, that but Because familiar. I did the same thing. I went to the V8 and then I was like, oh, this is just crap, isn't it? <laughs> couldn't I, stop the thing, couldn't turn it. It's so hard. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was like, I'll, I might come back to this later. And then, thank God I did because I'd learned so much more about the sim, actually spending time in a car that I was confident with, that I sort of knew what I was doing. And then, you know, when you come back to something that's harder, you've learned the sim, you've learned your race craft, which is actually a really important thing. You've learned how not to accrue off tracks. You've learned how not to just run into people. You've learned how to race them. And then suddenly, oh, it's just learning a new driving style. Okay, that's slightly simplified the process. I was going to say you used my strategy for sure there with banging your head up against the wall. I thought that was a really interesting way of going about it. <laughs> oh, headbutting the walls at Montreal. It's, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> it's how we all did it, right? Right. Well, I think oh. everyone's got to headbutt that one wall. Or, the, or, the, or grabbing, grabbing the grass at the exit of turn one at most sport. That's a good one. There's a, yeah, there's plenty of tracks. And Cassie, you, you were saying you love Sonoma, but it just doesn't have enough room to take a swig of a beer anywhere in it. So it's off the No, list. Well, look, it's not off the list. I've seen a few hats on the, on the internet uh, that will accustom to my <laughs> abilities. <laughs> you have to get one of those, mate. Yep. Did and we want to see it on your Twitch stream when you're doing it. What, what was that? I need to do a Twitch stream whilst I'm doing it. Well, look, that was actually part of, part of the plan. Um, but yeah, my supplier ran out and, uh, you know, obviously I, I need to go searching again. So if anyone knows anyone who can supply one of those hats, please get in contact with me. Well, the question to, for me is what kind of beer will be in it? Because we're down here in Sydney. I'm pretty sure it's going to be some type of, what are you going to do? Mate, it's going to be, it's going to be, well, go the it's blues. New. It's going to be a two is new and, uh, it's going to be a two is new. And I'm pretty sure that Ross is going to be, uh, 
sticking a couple of forex in there, mate, because you you're up in Queensland, yeah, near uh, near the Gold Coast or Brisbane. Uh, Brisbane. Brisbane. Oh, so it's a shame, mate. Did your yeah. oh, <laughs> look? I, I could rub in other victories, but I think we're going going out of scope of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, enough. like about ten in a row, or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Um, but but you know, being from that end of the of the country, do you is that where your love of of motorsport came from? Did you go and see some Gold Coast races, or or is it? Yeah, Formula One. Where, where did this all start for you, mate? Actually, good question. Um, my dad was really into it because he grew up in Sydney and they were right near Oran Park. So he and his dad would go out uh, quite frequently and that's where his passion began. So then when we came along, uh, it was um, it was pretty infectious, his love for, for motorsport. And then, you know, got the PS, PS1 with the good old Destruction Derby and Gran Turismo on it and started loving cars. Yeah. <laughs> And you say you say we, and that that's obviously you and uh, your your brother, Frank Carlo. Yeah, correct. Yeah, talking about when we used to race on, in R Factor. At, uh, yeah, he was also extremely fast, and you know, I'd love to see him on on our racing. But he reminds me of a, a bit of a parallel universe, a bit of an older version of our of our ASM friends, Dane and, and Ethan. Giving us a little too much cred. <laughs> You guys must have the fact that you're both quite talented and, and quite fast. Do you think that maybe? grew your your ability in the sim and driving etc just having each other to, to kind of compete off well i think we i think when we played racing games on the xbox and playstation back then we really loved the f1 games we loved the building the career so i think we we learned how to how our skill set from that probably not a great reference point but you get what i'm what i'm getting at so then when we jumped into the sim we had similar skills and then when we found we were coming up to similar struggles and different successes, we kind of learned at the same time and grew at kind of the same speed because it felt like, you know, I got quick and then he got quick. It was really strange and very cool to have this constant competition. How do you go for, um, in your team, speaking of like little inter- inner team little rivalries, have you got anyone in your team who uh, also runs the Scops on a regular basis? Uh, not at this stage. However, our most recent signing, the enigmatic Forzano Nabi. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> was gonna, I was going to lead into that. That's, uh, that's brilliant. So you got Forza. Loaded question. That was a loaded <laughs> question and a half. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into this hosting stuff. Um, so, mate, how do you think you're coming fourth in the championship now? How, how far up do you reckon you can go with someone um, to compete with within your own team there with Forzan, someone like Forzan Al Nabi? I, I don't think I can go any higher than, than where I am right now. I mean, look at the three guys ahead of me. I'm not, I'm not getting anywhere near those blokes. <laughs> um, How are you my, endure, how's your endurance team going to look there, mate? Yeah, that's, that's going to be really interesting. I'm really excited for that. And we'll do some of the um, Australian Online Supercar Championship as well to get our feet wet and uh, make sure we're, um, we've got some synergy going on. But yeah, I'm I'm really keen to see how we go. But I know there's going to be a fairly decent skill gap between himself and I. Like, let's be honest, he's he's so fast in the V8s, and I'm just sort of, you know, I'm... fourth in the uh, Scops Championship. Yeah, uh, on the <laughs> definition of co-drivers, though, mate, based on those penalty points and incidents, the lack of incidents that you carry throughout the first few rounds, you would be looked at as pretty much one of the best co-drivers if they, if you don't think that you're up to up to speed and, and up to pace with Forzan. Imagine how strong that team is going to be with such a consistent driver driving around with one of the top five drivers, one of the other top five drivers around. Yeah, and, and that's true as well. Um, but the, the, other, the other side of it is our tracks like Bathurst, which are also very, very spe- specialist. I mean, there are a lot of guys we haven't seen this season yet that will take up co-driver positions and they're just phenomenal. They won't dent the car at all and will lap stupidly fast all day long. And they're going to be people that I'm going to have to keep an eye on as well, trying to make sure if Forzan gets the car into a position, you know, where he could get the Steeler top 10, top five, or God forbid, even a podium, that it's, it's going to be really, um, there's going to be a lot of pressure to try and uh, make sure I'm not letting him down and making sure we can get a really good, a really good result. I think that the point that you're making there is, is entirely accurate, but there are so many combinations out there where you don't really have two drivers that are equal in skill sets. And I think having a gun speed demon sort of thing and then having a consistent driver, which is, is going to, like you say, bring the car back with no damage, that's really going to be 
one of the, the best teams to have because you're going to give yourself a shot at if you can't make the overall speed with driver A, driver B can come in and go and blitz the field. So it's going to give you an upper hand in that sort of sense. Yeah, and, and that, that's, that's true as well. It's about bringing the car back in, in one piece and in as high a position as, as we can. And I, I'm confident that I, that I can do that. It's when you know, push comes to shove, things will get really, really interesting. Can I ask you, Ross, about Forzan and his signing to Trick Sim? It's Trick Sim Sports. Yes. yes. Yep. So that team isn't really as known. I mean, it's uh, like it seems like you might be bringing that team into Scops. I mean, that's what it seems like. Would that be an accurate statement? Actually, it's more it's more a GT3 specialist team uh, started by Anthony Winkleman and Martin Silvassi. Um, they they came from uh, Evolution Racing team. Uh, they, I think they formed the team about a year or so ago now, wanting to a change of pace, um, and they very much specialise in the GT3 side of it, and that's why I joined because I really want to do GT3. But I said, hey, I really like my V8, so I'm going to race that as well while I'm while I'm with you guys. And God, what what a what a journey that's been so far. So yeah, that's 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 kind of what I'm, I'm getting at. It uh, seems like a bit of a turn of luck and just something that's come a little bit out of uh, out of nowhere. Where you've joined the team Trick Sim Sports for the GT3 division because you're obviously really quite um, accredited there. Then all of a sudden you just want to yeah, let's give it let's give it a go. The V8 going to try and qualify for Scops, and all of a sudden you find yourself in fourth place in the championship. I mean. Now that Forzan is, is jumping in too, like how much are you going to be uh, you know, putting focus on the V8 with Forzan um, as opposed to what you might have jumped into Trick Sim Sports in the first place to do? Um, that's a really good question because when I, when I started, I was just like, look, I'll just find time during the week, put in a couple of pre-qualifying laps and see how we go. Um, but now with Forzan, we have a, you know, now we're going to have a competitive package and uh, we'll have to try and you know, divvy up some time between GT3 um, the GTE for the Oceanic Endurance Championship and the Porsche as well. So we've got a, we've got a full plate. Um, so that's going to be a really interesting challenge to, to balance those. Um, so I'm yeah, not, not sure how much focus we're going to put into the SCOPS itself because I just generally run a VRS setup and away I go. Yeah, wow. Well. Uh, on that note, thanks to Trans Tasman Racing for those, yeah, those was, setups that seem to go quite well. I was going to give the little <laughs> shout, shout out to, uh, to Madison there. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean that um the uh, the Snedderton setup. I've used that three rounds in a row, including Phillip Island, just to give you an idea of how clueless I am. <laughs> but it works. Oh, I, that's funny. Works just get really out well. and I'll fourth in the championship. Let's just go with that. <laughs> but that's interesting, though. How you seem quite relaxed about it, and you still it sounds like you're still just going to pursue what you want to do. And that's something that I get a sense of you about, you know, as a, as a, as a, your personality in this whole landscape of iRacing and in Australian supercars, you kind of just, you kind of out there just have fun and just do what you want to do. I think a lot of guys to their credit, take it quite seriously and uh, really competitive and take the V8 as a bit of a, you know, it's quite a religion here in, in our country to, to drive that thing. But you seem just really relaxed to just be a passionate motorsport fan. You know, I think that with Forzan, he's so good in the V8 and he also can cross the boundary over into GT3. So, yeah, you guys are going to be, I think, be a bit of a force to be reckoned with on, on those two fronts for sure. And yeah, he's, he's an absolute alien for sure. And, you know, when, when you're able to drive multiple cars, um, it really... It makes it makes the iRacing experience just so so much more to be able to have different competition um, any day of the week if you um, if you want. So that's why I'm I'm really excited with the results that I've been getting as well. Just been like, well, I feel like jumping in the car today. Let's or I have to jump in the car today to put in a quick pre qualifying time. Let's see how we go. Ah, so that's what happens. Yeah, pretty much. It's the quality situation pre quals for Scops. Is that actually what happens? That sometimes you just that don't find the time and you just have to jump in and do a couple of laps for pre-qual? Is that actually what happens? Uh, well, generally pre-qual is my entire practice. I- I'm, not, I'm not joking. It's just, um, you know, if I have the Thursday, Friday, or the Saturday, like this weekend, I'll have to do the, the laps on the Thursday and that's basically what I'm limited to. So hopefully I can get into top split and then do a little bit more longer running on Saturday morning with a little bit of what little I know about setup. But now that we've got fours on, that might be a bit different. But naturally, the the approach is just do what I can to get into the top split, uh, top split, or if not second split, and see how we go from there, and um, then do a little bit of work on the on the race pace afterwards. 
I want to make a point of that because you say you want to try and get into tops, but you've been able to use that jump up rule from second to top a couple of times. Are, are you finding it enjoyable? Like enjoyable to do two races back to back? But are you are you a fan of it, or are you not? Do you would you prefer to be in top split always? Oh, I'm a huge fan of the rule. I think it's I think it's such such a brilliant addition. I'd love to see it actually expanded further, but you know, still it's still in a trial period, so baby steps but ultimately i love the rule i'd but i admittedly i would prefer just to get straight through to top split because that's where i want to be racing if i can't race there then second split's fine i love second split but now looking at my position in the championship i kind of feel obliged that i have to make top split and that's a scary thought because when i pre-qualify i'm basically on the fringe of the top 40 and as you've seen i've on two occasions i've fallen half a tenth or a tenth shy of that of that critical cutoff what do you think it is uh the the secret to qualifying um i suppose like a lot of you see a lot of people out there who can make up 15 spots throughout a race but uh when it comes to actually qualifying for a race i will throw a name out there uh, you know he's, he's uh hosted with us before mr thomas hins he tends to always do the same thing and you know he might start at the back of the pack but um what do you think the secret is to you know smacking in that that best qualifying time if I knew, I'd tell you. <laughs> Simple well, as that. You, obviously, you do it in your GT cars, don't you? I, I genuinely don't know. Or else I'd, or else oh, yeah, I'd I have that. a theory. <laughs> it, it comes from oh, you, no. Chris. Oh, damn. Less brake, I've... more throttle, and don't pleb it. <laughs> yeah, not plebbing it's definitely a big part of it, I'd say. Um, that, unfortunately, that really puts I can't you in good take stead. my own advice. Yep. Easy to say in theory, but you try and do that. There's no doubt as well, Ross, with you saying that the pressure's on, there's no doubt that the field's definitely gotten stronger. What do you, what do you reckon that is? Is it, is it pure numbers or um, is everyone putting more time into their, their practice? Um, probably a bit of both. Um, I also want to add the prestige of the championship. Um, the Ads Online have done a phenomenal job and Oceanic Sim Racing of being able to build hype around it and getting people, capturing people's imagination, I think, with these fantastic broadcasts. And also with Jake Sperry coming on board with its and Reese's fantastic commentary as well. There's so much credibility in that commentary box and how legit the, the, the commentary and the broadcast looks that you can't help but wonder, oh, I really want to, I really want to get on board with this. And next step, I want to actually do really well in this. So you get people who are doing, putting in time. You got people who are getting VRS coaching, TTL coaching and whatnot as well to get that extra um, pace as well. And I, I think that's phenomenal to, to see how far that's come. But yeah, as, uh, as you said, the competition is definitely um, higher than it's been, especially in that mid pack. I mean, it's so frantic. The times are so close. Um, you know, you fall half, half a tenth out um, away from your optimal and you can be knocked back to second split as I've found. Now that's um, viewing and, and seeing the V8s online and, and the commentary and the whole package and what they've, they've got to, to give the community, it's exactly how I experience it too. You see, you're like, that's amazing. That's phenomenal what they're doing. And then you want to be a part of it. You get into iRacing and then you want to actually do well at it for sure. I, I completely relate to that. Um, everything you said about the V8s online is true. Reese Gardner, absolutely. But how much is uh, Jake Speary paying you to say good, nice things about him? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's giving me Sperry points. Oh, oh, everyone wants a Sperry point. Damn. Split, the, split, split two Sperrys for life. <laughs> well, b- believe it or not, uh, Jay told me that he's never had to kick Jake Sperry out of the Discord channel. And I thought that was a bit of, a, <laughs> bit of an interesting factoid. You've probably never heard anyone quite say your name the way that uh, Jake Sperry says it. Yeah, it does make the spine tingle a little Ross bit. Rizzo. <laughs> Ross Rizzo! Ross <laughs> Rizzo! Coming down, second split, Ross Rizzo! We might give him a lot, but <laughs> to be honest, the V8's online broadcast with with Reese, Jake, and and the, everything they put together is just, it adds that element which people tune into a Supercars broadcast, they get Crompton and Scaife and, and all of that. We get Speary and uh, Reese and... Th- it's just, it's its own phenomenon. And I think that's what makes you want to do well in it is to be sort of commented about by them. Credibility, mate. I think that's that's the underlying word. That's what we all want in this sim racing community, you know, cred- credibility. And those guys just make it happen and, and the, the way that the racing is. Yeah. To be running in the top four. Yeah, I never yeah. would have seen that coming. So but absolutely beside myself. So it's really, really been cool. Let's uh, hope we don't smash you with the uh, podcaster's curse. 
which is uh, now a thing, apparently. We, we haven't done uh, that yet, have we? Yeah, no, Jake Burton hasn't been the same since he's... That's actually, that's actually <laughs> true. That's bad. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Uh, <laughs> actually, I think I, I felt I was immune to commentator's curse until last Wednesday. Oh, no. What happened there, Matt? <laughs> what happened last... Did you race in the... So, that was the GT3s on Wednesday, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Had a great race until the final corner and then, oh, well. <laughs> you should, you should no. jump in a wheelie bins race. I came, I give out commentators curses like they're going out of fashion. You know, you know, that's my excuse for when we're driving in Enduros and I hit the wall at 180 Ks. <laughs> <laughs> see, everyone looks for their talented co-driver. I look to my left and see some guy wearing a beer hat. <laughs> <laughs> like that oh, GRDZ geez. series, you're going in there as the defending champ. So you've got to obviously put a lot of time and effort into, uh, you know, maintaining your your status there. But, I mean, yeah, the workload you must have to, to run both series. I'm wondering from my po- point of view, from still feeling like I'm a little bit of a novice in a lot of these cars, where it'll take me so much work just to do one series. You must be on a level where it's comfortable, I guess. Would that be a good word? Like the, the switch between a GT3 and the amazing brake system they have and the kind of ease and comfortability in some of those cars compared to the V8. Uh, can, are you someone that can just jump from a, v, a GT3 race and then jump straight into a, a V8 or do you still have to transition? Oh, there's always transition, but it, it's, it's experience mostly. I mean, you, you know what to expect once you get in either cockpit, like you said, the ABS or the locking brakes of the of the v8 and then the remaining details are about a a dozen or so laps of practice away it's just the learning of the uh in the first place um that's the hardest part so once you've been on iRacing as long as i have it the transition isn't so difficult what kind of um system are you or what kind of setup have you got going on um i've got uh fanatic v 2.5 wheelbase and v3 pedals and triple monitors and it's obviously working well, the triple monitors in particular, now that my peripheral vision, I actually can see other people beside me. So oh, that, that adds to the immersion, immersion amazingly. And I know VR will do the step again. Um, but yeah, the, um, the triples really helped me to be able to get spatially aware. And the pedals and wheel, not so much in terms of pace, but the consistency, which is what I've really nailed down in the last season or so. Because we get a few people through the podcast and they seem to sort of there seems to be a a massive range of what people are using but everyone's always bringing to that same point which is once they know what they've got once they know exactly what they're playing with the consistency is exactly what gets them to where they need to be yeah and it's it's not like you know you throw money at it and you're going to go faster um it's not it it doesn't happen (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all all the gear and no idea yeah that's 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 me me. that's me (laughs) Let's stroll. Are you listening? (laughs) (laughs) What podcast is this? No, this. No, sorry, this is not the Formula One. (laughs) Um, On the flip side of that, you've got guys like Dane who make who make a name using, you know, being the budget alien. And I know Forzan's gear isn't isn't hugely impressive either. I think I think Dane's actually got better gear than (laughs) Forzan. To be honest, that's that's not fair. Oh, mate, honestly, I think Forzan's probably, like I spoke to Forzan probably a week ago and, you know, from the sounds of it, uh, yeah, I think um, Dane Warren definitely has a competitor for bud- for title of budget alien. Wow. But but goes to show, and I mean, um, I actually remember, um, Madison might have to confirm this, but I do remember he, was, he showed a video or a photo or something where he was balancing an old wheel on a skateboard while he was driving what? and obviously kicking people's ass at the same time. So it's not entirely the gear. It's like, if you've got it, you've got it. Well, oh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just going to unsubscribe to my <laughs> thing. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. Nah, nah, we all do it for fun. And uh, sim, ra- sim racing buy and sell will have uh, a new rig on tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> <Kessies. laughs> this one cost me 20 bucks. Yeah. I got the skateboard <laughs> from <laughs> Maybe I can get a hold of that. I know that Madison only lives about 20 kilometers from me. So, you know, maybe Madison, get in contact and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, get that magical skateboard off you and, uh, you know, give it a run before the next podcast. <laughs> it's funny that you mention the uh, 
how much fun you have. It's really, it's kind of a breath of fresh air um, based on how many people that we speak to who put in hours and hours. Like I know that when we were speaking to Jake Burton, he was talking about the countless hours that the guys at TTR did put in to those uh, VRS setups that you get to use every race. Uh, Ross, <laughs> oh, it, it, it's time well spent, boys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, definitely oh, a breath of fresh amazing. air for us because we're all fans, and you know, I mean, we all do it for fun, you know. And unless you're on, a, unless Trick Sim Sports paying you, you know, six figures or something, I, I don't think we're all doing it for money. Uh, um, but no, it's really good to um, have someone like you on and and hear about how much fun you actually have um, in all these um, highly competitive series out there. And uh, the other side of it is, you know, we all have different different reasons for using it. Most at the end of the day, a lot of us are using it for fun. A lot of us are getting it, using it to get better. And I think that you know, being able to build character in something that is as difficult as this is, you know, shouldn't be taken for granted. You know, when when you have you know a wheel disconnect on you halfway through a race, those weird little challenges that make you kind of go, oh well, that that hurt, taken on the chin and move on because there's worse things that can happen, right? So stuff that happens in the sim can often translate, you know, to, to being real character building experiences. You do sound like you just have fun with it above anything else and just to take it in, in your stride. But um, I wanted to ask you though, just to, uh, kind of branching off that real life stuff, do you, you know, do you, you have a career and stuff or like a lot of the guys just have a lot of time for the sim, but uh, you don't strike me as someone who'd Stay home all day on the sim. You must, you must have a job and, and work. And you know how does how does how do you juggle that? Like your stuff outside. Yeah, I've I've got a nine to five. I've got an accounting degree, so I'm going to study to be a chartered accountant in the next we, few months as well. So yeah, we need we need to have a talk, mate. We need to have a talk. Uh oh, <laughs> Do, dodgy uh, spoiler. Dodgy t- tax returns are coming. Yeah. And we'll just cut that one out in case the ATO are listening. <laughs> you're, you're being indicted where's your source the flat chat podcast <laughs> okay these are the guys that are talking about having beer hats while they're driving great <laughs> and wearing, yeah exactly beer hats and the tax right the the tax, uh, <laughs> i can write that off on tax can i <laughs> you know, did we say credibility was that one of the words we were using before yeah you mentioned it if you have, have a startup and you sponsor it on iRacing does it become a tax offset oh shit <laughs> Oh, I think we yeah. might need to have a... That might get cut because I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for promotional purposes. Thank you, $100 a year subscription. Boom. <laughs> well, plus the twenty-five dollars to $35,000 sim rig. <laughs> That's a nice one too. It is a good work. Excuse me, oh, why do you man. need a 1080Ti <laughs> for, your, for your day-to-day? Um... <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you look at your eye racing stats and claim like kilometers training? <laughs> 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 like, oh, I just did three hundred laps at Nordschleife. You know, oh, wow. Need some tax back on that. <laughs> oh well, well, I think we might leave it there, guys. Uh, <laughs> Ross. Uh, if, it's great to have you in. Uh, you've got a really good ch- – I reckon personally you've got a chance at a, at a couple of podiums this season, mate, so keep sticking to it. Um, keep having fun, though. That's the most important thing. Um, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, have you got any shout-outs to maybe any sponsors or any of the guys in your team? Uh, for sure. So, Anthony, Marty, and Forzan, thanks for being an awesome team. Our sponsors, Trick Fabrications, uh, HRS Racing Simulations, HPP uh, – HPP simulations, yes, and Joel Real Timing. And, of course, you guys for hosting the podcast and, of course, the plugs we gave to V8s Online, the incredible job that they do there, and Oceanic Sim Racing for the magnificent series that is Scops, and GT Leagues Australia for the Geodesic Racing Porsche and GT3 series. So we really uh, appreciate Ross. Thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Um, we apologise once again that uh, it's taken so long for this interview to come out, but uh, you know we really appreciate you joining uh, joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing better results. Uh, sorry, even better results out of you um, at Trixie Thoughts. Yeah, man, I really enjoy. Uh, it's quite refreshing having a trip on the scene. I'm not really aware of like if they've been around racing other series, GTs or things like that, but they're 
you know, new names on the grid are always um, it's always refreshing to see. And like uh, bringing Forzan on after the PSS demise has been a pretty pretty bloody good move. They're going to be a really strong combo for the Enduros. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was going to say uh, you don't know any of the other drivers. Uh, Anthony Winkleman was, uh, I think, it's the team boss for Trix Trix Sim Sports, and I believe he might have won one of the races that you were in earlier today, Gene. So, you know, they're definitely getting their name out there. That's in the geodesic uh, series. Yeah, and uh, Martin Silvassi as well, I believe. Um, but yeah, I'm just enjoying seeing uh, some some fresh skins out there and some some new teams on the scene and. Uh, so moving on, next the next race was at Interlagos, Brazil. Um, now, the first thing I want to talk about with Brazil was definitely the format. Um, with Split One, anyway, they ran three races, uh, three races throughout the weekend, um, qualifying before race one, reverse random number uh, grid for race two, which uh, was eventually the random number was twenty one. So. If, the person who started 21st in the first race got the start on pole. And uh, the finishing position of that race um, started off the uh, race three. So, guys, what do you guys think about that format? Do you think that that should come back in um, on some of the other tracks as well? Yes, definitely. I, I thought the, the combination of that track and that format for the weekend was um, made for a fantastic show, to be honest. And the numbers bore that out as well with uh, that 50% increase over the previous round that we talked about earlier. Um, and, and the viewer numbers, I think they went from like 2,000 views previous round to like 3,000 or so for, for the Interlagos round. And um, yeah, having raced it, I, I really enjoyed having that, that three sprint race format. It was... Um, it took away the pit stop element, but on the other hand, uh, the intensity level only ramped up um, because yeah, it's got that uh, you know that pit strategy element uh, taken out of play, and so it's it's all about just making positions on track rather than than due to any pit strategy or whatever. Um, yeah, I I had a great time. It was fantastic, and I would happily see more of it. My only comments or constructive criticism I'd give uh, the series organisers would be. The split one, I didn't think needed to be three races. Probably could have made it a bit shorter and given split two a reverse race because I think they just, it it added something to split one. So I reckon if we had a set through split two, it would have been such a crazy, insane broadcast. It would have been awesome. Well, you mentioned the uh, pit stop uh, being removed there, Gene. Do you reckon they probably could have added a pit stop uh, element to the second race, the reverse grid race? Nah, man, the- or if anything, I'll... Possibly for the the longer third race, um, but I have to say I probably would disagree with uh, Nori there. I, I think the Super Split Two race format um, kind of needs to just remain as it is, like consistently throughout the season. You know, the they don't have the qualifying on the night anymore. The the quality times are set by pre qual, and so everyone goes in knowing where they're getting up. And they know they've got a race distance that's pretty similar round to round, and they're going to have a pit stop to do. And end of the day, if you're at, in front at the end of that, you get the promotion up to the top split. I think um, just for consistency and continuity, having that split two race format stay as is is probably a good thing. And um, split one's sort of you know what it's really all about, isn't it? And so changing it up for for the top split and having like the triple sprint format and things like that um, is is the right way to go about it. Well, I think the uh, split two race, I don't really want to go into too much detail. I mean, yours truly put on a very <laughs> entertaining uh, um, incident on three, I believe. Um, I kind of turned into uh, Daryl Carter. Apologize for that, mate. But um, it doesn't seem like it did too much damage to you. But, um, you know... Uh, turned into a hand grenade. That's what you turned into. Mate. I turned into a hand grenade. I hit the very, very hard. My debut. The excuse that I'm going to bring. <laughs> Scratched up our fresh paint job as well. 
Well, it's well. I've got to say, uh, speaking of your your fresh paint job, uh, Connor will kill me if I don't mention his PB performance in 14th position in second split. So, you know, yeah, go Connor McCluskey Young. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Where did I finish and, my split two race? Uh, 14th position, mate. About I don't know, 12 weeks ago, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that was when everyone was on the ban. Or I uh, before I upgraded and went backwards. Yes. So no, good stuff, Gene. Yeah, you, you guys had yeah heaps of people in 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 the race. So many many cars. Yeah, in PRA. From... We oh, what, we end up five cars across the two splits, I think, which is great. And uh, the best thing about it was to finally have Paul Preston, one of the team founders, crack the top split. He's been trying his heart out at Scops for I think this is his third, possibly fourth season now. I'm not too sure, and he's never quite made it. And the other weekend for uh, Interlagos, he found something i don't know he he had it over all the rest of us and finally got that maiden top split appearance which he was i know he was so pretty pumped about so i was really really stoked to see that for him yeah yeah we're super proud super proud and happy we're like yeah elated he's gonna be mighty pissed off when kessie runs in next week and gets a bloody top 10 (laughs) top split (laughs) result i don't don't think yeah i think you might be pushing me a bit too far up the ladder there mate (laughs) Well, onto the onto the rest of that race anyway. Get a so. pati- participation award. That's what. We're going to do. <laughs> well, I think that's what I achieved. Can I get one of them? They're really good. <laughs> uh, so no, you didn't even you didn't even get that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so moving on to the rest of that that uh, that race anyway. Um, Scott Lan- Larnack took the win in second split uh, for TTL. Uh, Craig Jones with CMR. Chris Coxhead in third place for Azuva Racing. Yeah, that was a, quite an exciting finish, second split race there. Those top three um, all ended up um, converging back together uh, towards the end of the race and they made for a pretty exciting last couple of laps there. It was really good to see. Yeah, it was. I mean, it did start with a bit of argy-bargy at the beginning. On uh, uh, Ben Smith was in everything. Uh, Greg Sharp and, and Ben Smith had came together at the beginning and they were the, they were the two leaders at the time and... You know, a lot of argy bargy, but um, you know, rubbing is racing, and um, it it really does set for those really really fun finishes. Now on to uh, split one. Those three races that we were referring for those the new format that we haven't run this season so far. Uh, we saw the first win for Forzen Al Nabi and Trick Sim Sports in Scops. Uh, another win by a non. TTR driver this season, yes. Well, we had a nice Nori clap in the background there. Yeah, that was me. Big congratulations. That is fantastic to see. And after the after Rizzo's interview too with Trick and promoting them and and Forzan coming in and joining the team and and taking a win, man, that is so cool, so cool. Again, I think I've said it like three times already. Not that we don't want to see any of the other more frequent names from the TTR or TTL win, but. It's just, yeah, not taking anything away from anyone else, but to see uh, Forza and El Nabi take that win for the new team, um, wow, it's just, it's just exciting. Could, you know? Couldn't have uh, happened to a nicer bloke. He's a really good bloke, Forza. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see. He's been very close many times and um, they've quite panned out. But, uh, yeah, the, the format thing, like, anyone that thinks the format is thrown in is a, like a manufactured way to, to produce winners other than, you know, the usual suspects is just barking up the wrong tree, I think. It's more about the show, you know, like it was a bloody good watch. Well, I think uh, speaking of some new winners, uh, I think the drive of the weekend, uh, hands down, was Wayne Burke for Synergy Sim Racing. He was definitely the star of the night and um, another, uh, yet another TTR, uh, non-TTR driver. Yeah. Um, but he was really, really dominant. He um, just on another level. Yeah, I mean, when you start twentieth position in the reverse grid and you still come third position, that that means you're you're definitely on pace and um, bit of a bit of a different name out there for the the normal two synergy guys that you see up the front with in Jordan Ross and 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 Brenton Hobson uh, Hobbo eighty eight. Um, uh, it's really good to see some new names up the top there and. Um, yeah, well, Hobbo actually had like a comparatively poor performance, if that's the right way to put it. Yeah, well, I mean, not, um, you, you know, we didn't see him in his usual kind of six 
No, I don't think that track sort of agreed with him. It wasn't a top 10 in any of the races. An average week from Hobbo, but we're sure he'll be back to win plenty of fifth fifth places uh, going forward. Just got to point out that Phil Cell, Jared Phil Cell did win the first race though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Out of the three. Yeah, so yeah. so the first race was won by Jared Phil. So that shows, I suppose, that, um, I mean, his qualifying pace, no matter how close it, um, it was, I mean, Wayne Burke was in second that first race as well. Um, his qualifying pace is right up there. I'd say his race pace is probably still there, but does it really show when they had that reverse grid, there was people like, who were you saying before, Griffin Gardner, um, was another was another driver who was right up the front in that in that uh, reverse grid race. He finished fifth position, but he wouldn't give up the position. And I'd say, as you mentioned before, for for Moss Sport, that um, some people just see the name in the background. I mean, Jared Philsell's you know one of the premier drivers in Australia. You see that name behind you, and some people just go, "No, nah, I'm as good as this person." And and Griffin definitely proved himself. There's definitely a few other drivers there that you know. Wouldn't give in easily, put it that way. Well, that kind of was the story, Yuck, I was uh, alluding to when we first started talking in this podcast is the kind of um, the evolution over the last few races of that and it kind of coming to a bit of a head with Forzan and Wayne Burke winning these last two races. It's like the, yeah, that, that's, that veil, that kind of smoke screen has to disappear uh, for, for some of these drivers to let the other guys who are really just about on that level to come through and start competing properly. Um, you know, not saying that uh, anyone's letting anyone pass. I'm not saying that. But to see like Wayne Burke is a really good example. When you're watching that last race, you're watching that and seeing his car on screen, you just had no doubt. It's almost like the car oozed uh, confidence. You knew that that guy was going to win. Wayne was going to win. He just had that thing that you kind of almost get a bit um, attuned to when you see if, uh, Phil Cell's car on track or Madison's car on track. It looked like it was Sometimes oozing grip hex to me. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Can they swing some over this? Yeah, screen, please? come on, Hoppo. Release no, I, it. I, Just I, put it on YouTube. It'll be right, man. <laughs> but you guys know what I mean, right? Like you see it yeah, and, for sure. and you're like, man, that's some, a confident car yeah. that's sitting there and will not be messed with. It's great to see. Yeah, car's on point in the zone. But, yeah, guys, like – the reverse grid race was fantastic. Like, just to to highlight, you know, you give some guys the opportunity to to get some clean air, and they can not only hold their own, but challenge. You know, that they're not uh, just slowly falling back and getting swallowed up. They're actually challenging. That genuine the pace. Them. Yeah, exactly right. So, like for example, Griffin Gardner, you just mentioned racing uh, for KRF and Scop. So I was I was quite interested to see. You know, like. How are those kind of guys that are, I mean, where did he finish back of the top 20, which put him up the front for the reverse grid race? And I believe Griffin might actually be a privateer as well. So Yeah, he generally. Uh, he's running for KRF for Scott. But, um, okay, yep. Yeah, it was kind of, and on the flip side of that, um, some names like, you know, your, your Phil Sells who smashed through from 15th to 5th and bugger all laps at Mossport. That wasn't quite the case this last round gone by, was it? You know, like, I think it was a bit of a surprise in talking to what JC was saying before. Was at Moss Sport, um, the commentators were just so expectant that Jared was going to make his way through the through the field, and they were trying to determine as to where he was going to finish. Was he going to finish first, second, third, fourth, or fifth? There was no doubt in their mind. And this race, it went a little bit differently. Yeah. At Interlagos, especially that reverse grid race. Yeah, the feeling has changed uh, and, and look forward to seeing how it's going to progress and evolve through the year. Not saying that, uh, I mean, it definitely looks like Jared Philsell is the one that's going to take it out. It just seems that way. I mean, the top three in the championship are kind of miles ahead of the rest of the pack. It's, it's hard to see someone coming up and challenging for the outright Scops championship. But to see the kind of progression and and that, uh, yeah, that feeling that there's someone on top that's un the unobtainable is, is becoming obtainable with all these wins, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And so for all these various reasons we've just kind of highlighted, like, is why I reckon the the race format was a really good thing for the series to at least experience. And I'd like to see it again. Like, throw my two cents in the ring. 
we'll we'll talk uh, different drivers. Um, another different driver that we've seen up the front of those two races, which we haven't seen up the front for a while anyway. Um, I know he was on his Twitch debut. Riley Blythe for uh, ERT did a great job pulling it home in second position in split one, race two, and race three. So... Great job from Riley Blythe there as well. Uh, moving on to the season standings, we have. Uh, I'm going to run through the standings, and then I've got a bit of a point to bring up in regards to a couple of guys at the top there. Jared Philsell in first position, Ethan Grigolt, Madison down in third position, Jake Burton in fourth position, and in fifth we have Ross Rizzo. Now the point I want to bring up is Ethan Grigolt is currently 72 points behind Jared Philsell. Now, just to put it in perspective there, Ross, uh, Ross Rizzo and Jake Burton are about 500 points from Madison. Can Ethan, throughout the, uh, the enduro rounds, which are upcoming, can Ethan draw back that gap with, on Jarrett in the next few rounds? Yes. Sure, it's possible. Perhaps 100% is, is can't see why I couldn't. So do you guys know the pairings for those guys? Uh, Phil Cell Muggleton. That, that should and, be the case, I think so, yep. Uh, so, obviously, Madison Down and Jake Burton. Yep. And who's the other ERT driver? So, with, Ethan uh, Griggold, I believe, we driving with Ian Ford. Now, my personal opinion on this matter, they are probably the best two fuel savers in the field. They are strategy kings, and they've proved, proven it time and time again. I am going to make my bold position, uh, bold prediction is that if those two are paired together, they will win the Enduros. They will win the Enduro Series out of those three. It is quite a big call. Big call. Well, that's what we – Cassie's about big calls, mate, big calls. Cassie, the, Chris, the big man, big call, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't do it like Sperry. Um. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just looking uh, at the license points now, guys, and you – we do have Muggo on 103 license points, which I guess means he'll be sitting out the upcoming Mons around. But then that should, I assume, uh, make him available for the Enduro. So, oh look, I, I, I'm betting that TTR have definitely got a bit of a strategy. They understand what what is um, upcoming and and what they're going to require because obviously they definitely. Jared to be at the front of the field for those races. I mean, I remember doing a, a an official Bathurst 1000 with Jared and it was an endurance race where his co-driver was not quite up to his level and he worked it back from, uh, I think it was about 20th position, uh, 40, 50 seconds behind to bring it home in second behind uh, Josh Rogers and Richard Hampstead and, and those guys ain't no scrubs. So <laughs> anything can happen in those enduro rounds. Um, do you guys have anyone else who... who can maybe compete for that endurance championship. I think the Trick Boys can. Hundred oh, straight. Yeah, for sure. I think that Forzan and Ross Rizzo in the Trick Sim Sports uh, car. I reckon they can go pretty damn good too. Yep. Well, and also, one. I'm not sure of which pairings they're going to go for at TTL, but um, someone like Brady and I oh, look. When it comes to Bathurst, it could be anyone. I mean. Bathurst, that's a Brady specialist track. It's a it's a Dane Warren specialist track, um, and Dane Warren's paired with Thomas McMillan, who also has um, you know some Bathurst pace for sure. Um, and and Madison and Jake, you can't take them out of the out of the hat either. But yeah, that's a really good point about Ross and and Forzan. They did just win. They won the first two Enduros in in. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's wrong. I think. No, they did. They did just win the first two Enduros in AOS win uh, yeah. Daytona and Imola. Um, trick, tri- that is, right? Trick, trick Sim Sports, yeah. Did I, did yeah. I say yeah. something else? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. No, I just, yeah, that's right. It was tri- Trick of already. <laughs> no, that's right. I was, I was... <laughs> it was shooting it was up in the bathroom. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you might shooting up success. <laughs> Joe awesome. Burkett was the name I was thinking of. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Burkett and well, Brady were a force to be reckoned with at the uh, the final AOSC Enduro last season. And again, I think they've been pretty competitive this season. And yeah, I definitely yeah. would put them up there for at least a podium contender. I think I might uh, 
Think about setting up a little cafe here in the inner west of Sydney called Burke and Brady. Come and have a chai latte at Burke and Brady's. <laughs> Make sure you uh, gluten-free croissants, people. <laughs> Burke and Brady's. It does sound a bit Birkin millennial. I'm actually going to throw my to say, support man? behind this. But, um... <laughs> that my jeans are too tight yeah, and yeah, my sorry. voice is changing. <laughs> sorry, Nori. No, that's all right. I was just going to talk about scops. Um, but I'm going to throw my support behind this Ethan Gregolt um, car for the Enduros because I think he's uh, he's got the, the pace and the co-driver to be able to get the job done. Like you were saying, Chris, there's only 72 points in it, so there's not a great deal considering the amount of points over the course of the three endurance races at Imola, Bathurst, and, of course, Montreal. I think uh, your your uh, is definitely right. <laughs> Yeah, Not to take we, anything away from all that. Considering I'm backing up your point, yes, it's it would our, be right. It's, our, it's our, bold, our bold prediction. Yeah, and no, Norris yeah. bold I remember prediction. when Ethan Grigolt was running the official series when I first came into iRacing, and that was a couple of years ago now, and he was cleaning up there. So he knows how to handle these cars. He knows how to drive these tracks. And, uh, He's a know, good qualifier yeah, too. He's so. definitely so been a force this season so far, and you couldn't have a more rock-solid co-driver in uh, Ian Ford. Well, I think that brings us to a close. Um, JC, Are we out of fuel and out of time? Uh, <laughs> no, we're going, we're going to uh, use that uh, pre-recorded thing, I think, JC. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so we're doing that now? That, that's where we cut off? Yeah, well, I was just going to say thanks to... Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, three, two, one. So thanks to uh, Nori and JC, as usual. Thanks for joining us uh, on the Flat Chat Podcast, guys. It's always a pleasure. And last but definitely not least, thanks very much from Progression Racing Australia, Gene Fiddies. Thanks very much for joining us today. Ah, no worries, boys. It's been good fun. Hope I made some sense. I did finish some sentences, right? Yeah, some of them. Some of them. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> that was awesome having you on, mate. And it was really fun to have. This is kind of like a bit more of a easy going, let your hair down type of um, podcast this this week or this time around and hope it continues um, <laughs> as the, yeah, this this month. Well, as the kind of, I guess, the producer of this thing and having to edit it all, I'm going to take great um, happiness in that I'm not going to have to edit this too much because just had a good time and, um, yeah, I hope everyone out there enjoyed it. More to come real soon too, by the way. So that's one thing i really got to put out there that, uh, more podcasts to come real soon. Not the big two month gap between it like this one. So yeah, look forward to to more uh, coming, guys. Thanks. Get on the iTunes, like the Flat Chat podcast on Facebook, and um, and yeah, get on iTunes, download the podcast, listen to it. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us if you want to be on the show. I'm definitely going to do that now that I've been on it. I'm, I'll really <laughs> like it, and I'll you listen can share to it, at least you this can one, share it. and I might even listen to the first couple. Um, oh, sweet. So that's how we get new, new I know you're listeners. A fan, is you have to be on the show, and you finally <laughs> will listen to it. <laughs> just, that, that's our new business model. Uh, just to get likes, we'll get, next week uh, podcast we will have 142 random guests from iRacing. Didn't that work? Get, they get Bo Albert on. He's got about 10,000 likes on his uh, on his Facebook page. If we had to share that, that might be new. something to chase up. I the subscribers will just go through the roof. Get Alta C- Esports on board. What to look forward to anyway? Alta C- Esports coming up as well. Alta C- Esports. That's it for this week's Flat Chat Podcast V8 Scops Edition. If you like the show, you can find all our social links in the description below. Subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and share it with your friends. Remember, folks, less break, more throttle, and above all else, don't pleb it. it.